everyone to our regular council meeting for November. We have full council attendance here this evening. Councillor Link from Ward 1, Councillor Busetti from Ward 2, Councillor Kleiber from Ward 3, and Councillor Preg from Ward 4. We have our CAO, Brent Alnick, our MLO is not on screen, Miss Lainey Shaw, and our planner from Red River Planning to help us uh, guide through our, our planning items this evening, Mr. Eno. I will read the resolution to open up our meeting and we can begin. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bracetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Link. I'm going to vote to approve the agenda as seen on the RM website and all net. My vote does not indicate approval of additions made to the agenda following the meeting. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried, thank you. All right, we have no addendums, additions to the meeting this evening. I will read the opening remarks. The RM of West St. Paul strives to be a safe and inclusive community that residents are proud to call home. Where diversity is embraced, the environment is cared for and leadership is valued and trusted. The West St. Paul Council is committed to working as a team to provide good governance, safe and reliable infrastructure, recreational facilities and outdoor spaces that the community can enjoy in a sustainable way that values the environment and is financially prudent. Before opening up our first public hearing, I'll just provide a few comments for people. Uh, we are aware that most people who attend or view our council meetings for planning matters, like the ones here tonight, are not completely familiar with how the planning process works. I'll just spend a few minutes providing some additional context so we have a better understanding of the process and the requirements of the Planning Act and our local bylaws. Any person can apply for a variance conditional use rezoning or subdivision as per the Manitoba Planning Act by making the application with West St. Paul's Planning Authority, the Red River Planning District. This does not mean that council has endorsed the planning item. When an application is submitted, council is required to hear from the applicant, from those representatives who attend the meeting or attend virtually to speak in favor, opposition, or for more information. It's important to note that council is being presented with all the information at the same time as those in attendance here tonight. These are procedures council members must follow once an application is officially filed with Red, the Red River Planning District until such time as a decision is made. Council members cannot speak with the applicant or any person, any persons who might be seeking information or want to speak in support or opposition of an open application. This guards against anyone influencing council members before the public hearing and ensures each member of council makes their decision based on the same information heard or presented by way of correspondence here tonight. Often residents are frustrated by not being able to speak to their elected officials once an application has been filed, but it is done for these reasons. Red River Planning staff can, however, answer questions from the public at any time. Red River Planning District accepts applications from residents and developers who want to build houses, sheds, swimming pools, garages, decks, etc., and from those who want to subdivide their lands from one lot splits to larger developments. Red River Planning District staff are professional planners recognized by a professional association and are tasked with re researching every application. Their work and recommendations to Council are made based on a legal framework, not personal opinions. They review each application against the Manitoba Planning Act, our development plan and our zoning bylaw. They also circulate the application to many other organizations that may be impacted such as Manitoba Infrastructure, Public School Finance Board, Sustainable Development, Gas, Hydro and adjacent municipalities. Red River Planning District staff does this to determine if the application meets all legal requirements. At public hearings, council hears from many delegations and we will ultimately decide if the application is a good fit for the community and if it will be approved. We consider both the legal requirements the planner has researched as well as feedback from our community. And that is why we are here tonight. We have two public hearings this evening. And I will begin by opening up our first public hearing. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to sections 96A of the Planning Act. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Planner, I will turn it over to you. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just bear with me. I'm just going to share my screen just for a, a brief little presentation on this item. So as you noted, this is variance number 110 of uh, 2021. It's for a property located at 910 Northumberland. And the purpose is to reduce the separation distance between the house and an accessory building. So in West St. Paul, uh, your zoning bylaw outlines that there must be a building separation of 10 feet minimum from all projections, uh, whether that's the wall is the furthest projection or the, or the eaves, there has to be a 10 foot separation between buildings. Uh, the, the purpose behind that is, is typically to deal with uh, uh, a fire spreading current uh, concerns, that sort of thing. In this case, the applicant is doing some additions onto their house and they're proposing a 1.91 foot uh, separation. Here's the property uh, in the context of the existing neighborhood, which is a rural residential neighborhood. And here's a drawing that's in your, uh, in your packet showing the, uh, the house, the new addition, and its proximity to the, uh, the existing detached garage. Now I should note that the 1.91 foot mark is taken from the edge of the deck to the uh, to the existing detached garage. Uh, the applicants are have a uh, a sunroom on the back there, and I'm uh, just wondering, can you see my cursor? You can. Okay. So here's a sunroom right here, and uh, the distance between the actual wall of the sunroom to the uh, uh, to the detached um, garage is about 15 feet. So if you're worried about uh, uh, walls and fire blowout, that sort of thing, the distance there actually exceeds the separation. But because the, uh, the deck is attached to the house, it's all deemed as one structure. So we're really talking about a deck that's a few feet off the ground uh, being separated by just under two feet from the, uh, from the garage there. Uh, if council does wish to approve this, we are suggesting uh, two conditions. So one is just a standard condition that we have on all these types of application, just saying that the variance is limited to the reduced separation distance as proposed. And if anything changes, then they need to come back uh, for new approvals from council. And the second condition is that they obtain all required permits and approvals from our office, as well as the uh, arm of West St. Paul. And there is an active uh, building permit application on this. That's all I have, uh, Madam Mayor. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eno. We'll go around our virtual council table here and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions for our planner? Uh, no, I don't have questions for the planner, but thank you, Mr. Planner. I appreciate uh, the site plan on uh, the last page of your report, and I appreciate your references to it as made understanding clear. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. Eno? No questions, thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions? No questions, thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? No questions. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Thank you for your report, Mr. Eno. No questions from me as well. Ms. Elias, have we got the applicants on the line wanting to speak? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Carol Harrison with us this evening. Good evening, Hello. Miss, Miss, Mrs. Harrison. Are you able to hear us okay? Yep. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Good. So you heard uh, the planner's presentation to council. Is there anything else that you're wanting to add uh, for council? No, that, uh, that's what I understand is how we explained it. So it sounds good to me. Great, I'll just go around our virtual council table here and see if there are any questions for you. Yeah. Councillor Bussetti, any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions? No questions from Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Prague, any questions? No questions, thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions? No questions, thank you. And no questions from me as well. Thanks for being available this evening. I'm gonna see if there's anybody else wanting to speak in support or opposition. 
and then you'll have an opportunity to speak after that if there's anyone registered. Okay. Ms. Flies, is there anyone registered to speak in favor, opposition, or for information? Um, Madam Mayor, we do have Michael and Terry Ward uh, that registered in support. Um, they didn't provide any additional comments and they're not with us this evening. Uh, other than that, no one was registered uh, against or for information. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Harrison, is there anything else that you're wanting to add for council? Uh, no, I think that's that's all. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any other questions from council to Ms. Harrison? Seeing none, thank you so much for being here this evening. Okay, thank you. And with no further questions, then I will close the public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preg, seconded Council Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Sorry, Councillor Preg, I didn't see your vote. In favor? Sorry. Okay, thank you. That is carried. Down and read the resolution. Variance. Whereas an application for variance order 110-21 was received for the property located at 910 Northumberland Road to reduce the minimum required separation distance between a house and accessory structure from required 10 feet minimum to 1.9 foot min minimum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the Arm of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 110-21 with the following conditions. One, this variance is limited to allow a reduced separation distance as proposed within this application. Any changes would require a new variance approval. And two, that the applicant owner obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the Red River Planning District and Arm of West St. Paul. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none then, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. All right, item 5.2. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 74.1 of the Planning Act. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preg, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Eno, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Once again, I'm just gonna take a moment and share my screen here. There we go. So this is a uh, zoning bylaw amendment 2021-10P. Uh, it's for the property located at 197 Falsher Road. And the applicant's proposing to rezone the property from an A80 agriculture zone to a A4 uh, agriculture zone. And uh, as council is aware, there is a related uh, subdivision application uh, to make four lots on this property. And that's something you're dealing with uh, later on in the agenda. So you gave first reading to this, uh, this bylaw on uh, October 14th, and it has been circulated to the government departments and we've uh, done our analysis and uh, provided you with a report. Uh, as said, the, um, the property uh, is going for an A4 zone. Uh, the A4 zone allows for four acre lots. It's uh, conducive with the development plan designation of agricultural restricted, which also requires a minimum lot size of, uh, of four acres. Uh, so those two things fit together. And uh, the, the context of the, I guess I can say the neighborhood or the area that it's in is across the streets to the west, across Vulture, there are a number of lots that are already uh, subdivided into four acre lots and zoned A4. So it fits within the context of the uh, of the neighborhood. 
As I noted, this has been circulated to the government departments. Uh, we didn't get any concerns. There was only a couple of uh, comments provided in your, uh, in your package. I should note that we got some late comments from both um, Manitoba Regional Planning as well as from uh, Manitoba Infrastructure, the highway, uh, highway planning branch. And uh, there are no concerns from those departments as well. So seeing that this adheres to the, uh, the development plan, as well as uh, there are no comments or concerns that have been flagged by the, uh, by the governments, uh, we're recommending that this could be approved. Uh, I should note that uh, just as usual with the zoning bylaw amendments, if there are a, a number of people who are objecting to this and we meet the thresholds, we'll have to hold off from giving a third reading uh, to allow the appeal process to, uh, to take place. Uh, on that note, I guess for Council's information, I haven't received any phone calls or inquiries or any letters of objection or supports uh, for this application. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I'll go around our council table. Councilor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. Eno? No, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Eno? No, Mr. Eno, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Councilor Prag, any questions? No questions, thank you, Mr. Eno. And Councillor Link, any questions? No, thanks, Mr. Eno. No questions from me as well. Thank you. Ms. Elias, have we got the applicant on the line uh, wanting to speak to Council? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Robert Orsalak with us this evening. Good evening, Mr. Orsalak. Can you? I'll say hi to the Council since I haven't talked to them in almost two years. They're all looking good. Anyway, I've, uh, you know I have talked about this for a long time. And the whole thing is, if it wasn't for the four mile road, I would just go around the, the house property. But I have this property for 54 years. And I feel that the new people, whoever comes next or in years to come, should have access to the four mile road. And they should have right to the end. Why, why create a problem? Or why have a little strip left idle behind there that's not even practical for farming? because it's different owners across uh, the east side of the farm four mile road and of course by doing this and uh, just having it surveyed and everything else i would the uh, two lots are coming a shade under four uh, but uh, going 20 feet closer to the house uh, would make the property line too close to the house on the south side that's why i've got approximately from the house not from the deck about 70 feet i think it is and so that's about it. But that's my main reason for this is not. And the north side of the trees, that 21 acres is going to stay in my time the way it is. That's all I wanted to do. It's getting time for me to start thinking about uh, a different place. Uh, any questions? From me? Thank you, Mr. Orsel. We're just looking at the rezoning right now, but we will be uh, looking at your subdivision uh, request next, uh, but as you know, with uh, provincial requirements, um, you're not able to speak on that. So it's great to provide some additional clarity as part of your zoning as well. I'll go around the uh, council table and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Ursuluk? Hello, Mr. Ursuluk. Glad to hear that you're doing well, and uh, <laughs> uh, we do miss seeing you at the coffee time. So yep. um, I hope you and family are well. I think you've explained this. Um, to counsel well, and uh, the application is very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Craig, any questions? No questions. The application is clear. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Orsalek? No, I don't have any questions. Thank you. And Councillor Bassetti, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Orsalek. No questions. Thank you. And no questions for me as well. Thank you, Mr. Orsalek. Thank you. Ms. Elias, is there anyone that registered late in support opposition or for information? Well, we did get a, a, a letter of support from Callie Orsalek uh, late this afternoon. She's registered in support. 
Uh, in opposition, we received uh, uh, opposition from Tristan and Nathaniel Picker. Uh, late this afternoon, Mr. Picker provided comments that uh, him, his wife, and their three young children moved to this area a year and a half ago because of it was a it was a much quieter neighborhood. There is not a lot of traffic down this gravel road. There are many other young families with small kids on Fulcher who would probably agree we would like to keep it this way. Uh, in addition, we also received opposition from Ian Bryden. No additional comments were provided. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Councillor Busetti, go ahead. Uh, Ms. Elias, I, I know we can't give the address, but is it on the same street? Just for clarification of where the where the negatives are coming, the against are coming from. Yes, they were located on the same street. Thank you. Mr. Orsilik, you do have uh, the opportunity to respond uh, as, as final comments to the opposition um, regarding quieter neighborhood, less traffic, and if there's anything else that you're wanting to add for council. Well, well, this here, these two new lots would be south of the applicants. Uh, one just moved in there uh, in the lot, both of them are in the last two years. But there will be, if the, whoever builds there one day, they won't be going past the, uh, my house because it's towards the corner. So it's not gonna interfere. Two houses are not gonna make the difference. Thank you, Mr. Orsluck. Are there any further questions from council for Mr. Orsluck? Seeing none, then I will thank you for making yourself available for council this evening. Thank you. I will read the resolution to close our public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I get a mover, please? Move by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Prag. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. I will read the resolution. This is second reading. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-10P being a bylaw of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul to rezone the subject lands located at 197 Fulcher Road from A80 Agricultural to A4 Agricultural be read a second time. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Prague. I'll go around and see if there's any further discussion. Councillor Prague, any further discussion on this planning matter? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Link? No, thank you. Councillor Busetti? No, thanks. And Councillor Clyper? No, thank you. No discussion from me as well. Hearing and seeing no discussion, I will call for a recorded vote and I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. I will read down here now to our third reading. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-10P being a bylaw of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul to rezone subjects land, lands located at 197 Fulcher Road from A80 Agricultural to A4 Agricultural to be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. All right, we have under 6.1 one more general planning item that we would. Uh, like Mr. Eno to guide us through. Uh, there's no public hearing on this item based on changes the province made to the Planning Act uh, that no public hearings are to take place on an existing road when there's subdivision on an existing road. So for those watching and may not understand, Fulshire Road is an existing road in West St. Paul and so there is no public hearing on this matter. Mr. Eno, I will turn it over to you to guide council through your report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There we go, just sharing my screen there. So uh, once again, this is the same property as uh, with the rezoning, uh, 197 Fulcher, and the applicant is wishing to create four new rural lots 
uh, for uh, future residential use. Once again, here's the subject property where you can see the, uh, the, the cultivated land as well as the, uh, the shelter belt around the existing home. And a bit of a photo, uh, a bit of a panorama. I tried my best here uh, of the big property, but uh, rather large property. So uh, subject home just in the, uh, in the middle there. And uh, the applicant is requesting to make, uh, take the one property and make it into four lots. Uh, two of the lots will be 3.85 acres in size. Uh, one will be 4.64 acres. And the remaining uh, property north of the shelter belt and home will be almost 22 acres in size. Uh, the minimum lot size is four acres. So a couple of the lots are just a smidge under that minimum size. As with the minimum lot width, it's uh, 198 feet is the minimum, and the lots all uh, exceed those uh, those requirements. But here's just an outline of the uh, of the applicant's uh, site plan, showing you the four new lots um, with the the two to the south of the of the home site. Those would be the ones that are just a smidge under that four acres in size. Uh, the property is now zoned as A4, so that's uh, this proposal would uh, would adhere to that. And as I noted, uh, they're looking to make uh, four lots, uh, similar to the last application. Uh, as I noted, it's within a, uh, a rural type of an area with lots across the street that are in the four acre range, also zoned as A4 and subdivided quite some time ago. The, uh, the criteria for approval of uh, subdivisions to major ones is that it adheres to the development plan as well as it adheres to the zoning bylaw. So the development plan has this property designated as agriculture restricted, which calls for a minimum of four acre size lots. The property is now rezoned to the A4 zone, which is four acre size lots. And the applicant is proposing lots that are uh, that two of them are exceeding the four acres and two of them are just a smidge under the four acres in size. Uh, but variances could be approved for uh, for those little bit reduced uh, lot sizes. This has been circulated to the uh, provincial departments as part of the process. And uh, there are no comments or no objections or concerns received from the uh, from the uh, different departments. There are also no utilities uh, requiring any additional easements. I, we would recommend that this could be approved as it seems to adhere to the uh, to both the development plan and the zoning bylaw in general. As I noted, some minor variances would be needed uh, or uh, the applicant looks like he could also just do a, a minor adjustment to the proposed location of those lots, uh, lot lines for the properties to the south to bring them into conformance. I think he already noted in the public hearing with the rezoning that uh, he'd probably not like to do that as uh, he wants to retain some of the existing features on his uh, on his farm site. So we would recommend approval subject to three conditions that are in front of you. The first one is that the applicant submits confirmation from the CAO of the municipality that all taxes have been paid, applicable development levies have been paid, and that he's entered into a development agreement uh, to address access, servicing, a drainage plan and grading plan to be prepared uh, by a qualified engineer and approved by the municipality. Number two of uh, second condition is that the applicant owner obtain variance approval for the two undersized lot areas or that they adjust the lot area to bring the lots into conformance. And number three is that the approval is given to zoning bylaw amendments uh, ZBA 2021-10P to rezone the property to A4. Well, that was just done moments ago. So he's already met uh, condition number three. Uh, the four requirements in your docket, A through D, are just for your information. Those are standard uh, requirements that the board will be uh, having a look at and approving, which relates to the applicant providing uh, mylar survey drawings and, uh, and the such. That's all I have for this, Madam uh, Mayor. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Great, thank you, Mr. Eno. I'll go around our table. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? No, thanks. Councillor Busetti? No, thank you. And Councillor Kleiber? No, 
Mr. Eno, I noticed that the lot four was 21.75 acres. So under the agricultural restricted, uh, that could still be further subdivided. Could it not to like five acre, as long as it's five acre lots? You're absolutely correct. Yeah, it, right now it's proposed to be uh, over 20 acres, but there would be nothing restricting an applicant to come in the future to propose to whittle that down to into uh, at least four acre lot sizes. So four lots at five acres. Yep. <laughs> Um, across the street, what is the zoning completely different across the street? Because it's exactly the same. It's A4 and uh, those lots are, uh, are all about four acres in size as well. There's a couple that are a little bit over, uh, but just by a smidge. Okay, so it's consistent with the surrounding area. Absolutely. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I'm not sure. I think this is probably a question for Ms. Elias, um, but council gets questions uh, regarding servicing from areas that are on the far ends of, of West St. Paul. And I wonder maybe Ms. Elias, if you could comment if it would be appropriate to include in the development agreement that the seller of the properties needs to make uh, purchasers aware that water and sewer service will not be coming to this area anytime soon. I just wondered your thoughts on that. We could add that to the development agreement, yes. Thank you. Yeah, we, we have questions and people move out to far rural areas and then ask when the servicing is coming. I don't think we need to add it to the resolution. It's just if it's something to be considered when the development agreement is being drawn up and then brought back to council. Um, real estate agents are probably part of the problem in misinforming people, but as long as people know that when they're purchasing that there is not sewer and water and likely not to be coming out in that way in the near future, then they're fully informed. All right, we don't have the applicant online as there's no public hearing. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Um, I'm just wondering logistically how um, that would play out as far as the sewer and water. And I, I certainly agree with you that that is an issue. Um, this is within keeping of sustainability. So there would be a, a um, septic field here, presumably, because it meets the requirements and there would be a well. So um, logistically to the, to, um, through, through the chair to Mr. Eno, if we put this condition into the development agreement, or maybe it's not a question for you, I don't know who's ever questioned it is, and Mr. Ursuluk sells the property to someone, let's say, um, if, it, if he is the point of contact, he has to advise them that they have to put in a well and septic. However, if Mr. Ursuluk then sells the 21 acres to somebody and they further subdivide it, then according to our planning act that development agreement would follow and because uh, it would be registered to title and that new owner if they subdivide would then have to inform anybody else is that correct <laughs> someone <laughs> I, I i think i'll follow you there uh, uh counselor i uh, yes the development plan would uh, run with the land and with the new owners and it would be incumbent upon new owners to inform new owners, I guess, uh, uh, of, of what's in there, or at least a development agreement. Um, what we also see in the value of a development agreement is that it's registered on title, as you know, and uh, those who actually do their due diligence with their real estate agents uh, will you typically pull the title in any of those kind of documents so they can read through them. Um, I'm, I'm not as familiar with the wording in your development agreements. Uh, but there is typically a recognition in situations like this, and CEO can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, that you know, the properties are not serviced and there's only these certain levels of servicing, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. So at least it'd be with land titles registered so anyone could look at that if they're ever looking at purchasing. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Perfect. Councillor Kleiber's comments about sewer and well raised a thought for me uh, regarding wells. Um, I saw no comments from any of the agencies. Is this within the Bristol uh, plume area in terms of water contamination at all? Just outside of it. 
And so that might be something worth noting in the development agreement that this is just outside the area so that people aren't wondering about that too. All right, with no further comments, questions, I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that the Council of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul under Section 125.1 of the Planning Act approved subdivision application S21-2918 located at 197 Fulshire Road to subdivide a 34 plus or minus lot into four lots ranging in size from 3.85 acres to 21.75 acres subject to the following conditions. One, applicant owner submits confirmation in writing from the Chief Administrative Officer of the municipality that A, taxes on the land to be subdivided for the current year plus any arrears have been paid or arrangements, arrangements satisfactory to council have been made. B, payment of any applicable development levies have been paid. C, a development agreement has been entered into to address the following but not limited to access, servicing, a drainage plan, grading has been, a drainage plan grading has been pre prepared to a, by a qualified engineer and submitted prior to any development to the satisfaction of the municipality and to ensure that the proposed property does not drain into or impede drainage from neighboring properties to applicant owner to obtain variance approval for undersized lot area or adjust the lot layout to bring into com conformance. Three, that approval is given to zoning bylaw amendment application file number ZBA 2021-10P to rezone the property to a, an A4 agricultural zone. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bracetti. Any further discussion vote? from council? Request for a recorded vote from Councillor Kleiber. Thank you. Any further discussion from Council? Seeing none, my points would be uh, on this application that it conforms with our recently changed development plan in terms of A4 size lots. Um, that according to the criteria presented uh, by Mr. Eno out of the Planning Act, and thank you for presenting that and including it in the package for Council, makes it very easy. Uh, that it meets the criteria in terms of being complementary to the existing neighborhood. So I have no concerns with this application. Seeing no further discussion then, I will call for the vote. All of those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Eno, for being available for Council tonight. Much appreciated. Always helpful to have you guide us through this process. Thank you, Council. Have a good evening. You too. All right, we are on item 6.2. And that is uh, Red River Planning District Activity Report for information. We have development service permit issuances, activity report for September, planning service applications received and activity port report for September. And the same, the permit issuances, activity report and uh, planning service both for October. I will go around and see if there's any uh, points for discussion from Council. Again, this is just received as information. Councillor Kleiber, any comments regarding the uh, Red River Planning Activity Report? No, thank you. Councillor Prague, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link? Um, I'm just assuming that these uh, reports were all accepted or approved by Red River Planning District. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Bassetti. No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, these come to Red River Planning so the board gets to see them. Councillor Bassetti and I have seen the reports, but I think it's great that we include them uh, for Council and for our residents to see so they're not searching through uh, Red River Planning. Uh, site to look for the information. And I'll just mention a couple of comments that are uh, noteworthy. Uh, West St. Paul number of permits issued uh, to date now. I had September information uh, was 600. We're at 703 permits this year. Um, so that includes everything from uh, single family, uh, accessory buildings, decks, uh, so 703 permits. So I know that uh, we often get calls from residents wondering about the status of their permits. Uh, there's a lot of permits going through Red River Planning. The total number of permits they had this year, 1,835. West St. Paul makes up 38% uh, 
of the total number of permits going through Red River planning of six municipalities, including the city of Selkirk. We have the highest number of permits coming out of West St. Paul. In terms of revenue for permit, uh, West St. Paul brought in $781,224.57 out of uh, $1,631,000. 1, so we are 48% of the total revenue uh, coming into uh, Red River Planning. So uh, recognizing that and the number of applications coming out of uh, West St. Paul, Councillor Bersetti and I have strongly advocated for hiring additional staff and thankfully that has been supported by the board and more staff has been hired to help meet the needs of our residents. Something else I found noteworthy in terms of uh, all of the planning applications, uh, West St. Paul was 96 of 331. Of note on some of our neighbors, St. Clements was 72 and St. Andrews was 49. The number of subdivisions, often we have people talk about how busy it is in West St. Paul in terms of subdivision applications. Some of our neighbors are just as busy with subdivision applications. 13 subdivision applications for St. Clements, 13 for St. Andrews and 12 for West St. Paul. We just have very large subdivisions. Um, I find this noteworthy because Plan 2050 calls for the decline in population of St. Andrews by close to 3,000 people and a decline in population in the next 30 years for St. Clements. And they had uh, 72 and 49 uh, planning applications. So what we see at Red River Planning, Councillor Busetti and I, in terms of the applications, we do not see a decline in people interested in St. Clements and St. Andrews. So noteworthy, um, good information for our residents. That we are just accepting as information. We have a number of minutes uh, to confirm this evening. We're on item number seven. First, we have the special meeting of October 25th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on October 25th, 2021 be approved. Can I get a mover, please? Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any questions, concerns regarding the October 25th meeting? Go ahead, Councillor Link. Item 4.1. Uh, the vote on the bylaw enforcement policy. My vote is marked incorrectly. I voted yes. Ms. Shaw, I will refer that to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I can make that correction. Our notes had it to the uh, a no vote. I'll make that correction. I did watch the YouTube. I clearly put my hand up. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any other questions, concerns? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. 7.2, October 28th, regular meeting. Be it resolved to that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on October 28th, 2021 be approved. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pereg, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried. 7.3, special meeting of November 5th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on November 5th, 2021 be approved. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any comments, discussion on that meeting? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried. 7.4, Committee of the Whole no meeting, November 9th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of Council held on November 9th, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pereg, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion on that meeting? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. We are down to item 7.5, special meeting of November 15th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on November 15th, 2021 be approved as presented. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. 3.1 for the accounts. Uh, both Councillor Link and I uh, voted in opposition and Councillor Shetty and yourself, Mayor Christian voted in favor. Uh, uh, Councillor Pereg did not vote. 
So I looked at the tape uh, at least three times. It's on timestamp 137. And therefore, the, the motion cannot be carried. The motion is considered defeated. So I guess we're going to have to bring that up on another meeting and do the vote again. So just to clarify, Councillor Kleiber, uh, November 15th, 3.1 for the accounts. Right. You're saying the accounts was defeated. Yeah, because two people voted against and two people voted for and Councillor Pereg did not. Ms. Shaw, would it be helpful if we called a recess and, and had an opportunity to review the tape then? Timestamp uh, time 137. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. That may be helpful. Uh, my notes show a 3-2 vote for item 3.1 on November 15th. Uh, I'll leave it to Council's discretion. Okay. Then uh, if your notes are saying that, we will take a recess and have an opportunity to review the tape, if you don't mind, Ms. Shaw. No, that's no problem. Okay. Okay. Councillor Kleiber, what number timestamp was that for that meeting? 137. 137. So we'll take a 15 minute break to give uh, to give time. Is that enough time, Ms. Shaw, to be able to review? Uh, that's ample time. I, I probably only need about five minutes. We'll take 15 anyway. Everybody can have a drink and then we'll carry on with the meeting as well. So thank, thank you. you. We are in recess for 15 minutes.
few minutes break to uh, review the for Ms. Shaw to be able to review the special meeting of November 15th. Mr. CAO, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Madam Mayor. So in, in the Zoom video, we can't see if Councillor Craig voted. Uh, I believe he seconded the motion, but I can't see if he voted or not. So in review of this vote 2-2, Councillor Kleiber and Councillor Link voted against. They voted against accepting the resolution to approve vouchers. This is in relation to vouchers ranging from a number of different payments. Um, I'm going to read out all the payments that were made on that day. I think there's about 40 of them, so it may take a while. And these are, uh, these are the vouchers that Councillor Link and Councillor Kleiber voted against. So 42815, they voted against Glenn Laskew of the Board of Revision for payment. Is this vote uh, carried or defeated? That's all we're asking here, and we're asking for the minutes. We don't need a recount of all of the account payments. It, that's disparaging. You're trying to say that we don't want accounts paid. That's disparaging to us. I'm asking that the minutes be reflecting of what happened, which was the 2-2 vote, and is, is according to our bylaws, would be defeated. So let's just get to the matter. We don't have to go through every item. That's just trying to disparage us, and I don't appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber, for your comments. We'll let the CAO respond to what was raised and the implications of what's happened here with the change uh, of vote in a 2-2 vote that would be defeated. In, in terms of disparaging, uh, that is your vote. Obviously, you're not embarrassed by voting against the checks. It's not something to be uh, disparaging if you're proud to vote against these checks because we now have to deal with that. Mr. CAO, go ahead. So, so in this case, a 2-2 vote means these vouchers can't be approved. Uh, I, have to, I have to list out uh, what's taking place now, Madam Mayor. So 42816 or 42817 was a payment for Manitoba Hydro. 42818 was a payment to the uh, MMAA. Payment 42819 was the Municipal Employment Benefit Board. Payment 42820 was to Terry Neplek, who worked on the Board of Revision. 482821 was a payment to the Operating Engineers, uh, that's the union. 42822 uh, was to the Receiver General for CPP and EI, Staff Income Tax. 42823 was for Lauren Saunders, Board of Revision. 42824 was to ADR properties. 42825 was to Alltech Industries Incorporated. 42826 was to the AMM Trading Company. 42827 was to Anderson Electric and Sons. 42828 was to BNB Landscaping. 42829 was to Sander Barnes. 42830 was to Bell Mobility. 42831 was to buy, buys and fire protection. 42831 was buy, buys and fire protection. Oh, I said that one already. 42832 was to Bobcat of Central Manitoba. 42833 was to Brightberry Incorporated. 42834 was to Giorgio Busetti. 42835 was to Cheryl Christian. 42836 was to the City of Winnipeg. 42837 was to clean air. 42838 was to contact projects. 42839 was to the CP Railway. 42840 was to Crown Specialties Products. 42841 was to Cubics Limited. 42842 was to Susan Draho. 42843 was to Jacob, Jacob E. Duick. 42844 was Brian Duplack. 42845 was to Marjorie Portier. 42846 was to Gold Business Solutions. 42847 was to Gotta to Go Toilet Rental. 42848 was to Grantham Law Offices. 42849 was to Dream Drop. 42850 was to Dean or Melanie Gudmanson. 42851, which H. Manello Consulting, 
42852 was into Interlake Eastern Regional. 42853 was to Edward Jaroselwich. 42854 was to Kuwait and Truck Service. 42855 was to Dorothy Cliver. 42856 was to Leo Sales and Services. 42857 was to Eleanor Link. 42858 was to Greg Lushinsky. 42859 was to Mar. 42860 was to MMAA. 42861 was to the Manitoba Water Services Board. 42862 was Donna Maxwell. 42863 was to Munisoft. 42864 was to Darlene Neal. 42865 was to Oakley Alarms Limited. 42866 was to Richard O'Birek. 42867 was to Do uh, John Pacheo. 42866 eight, six, eight was to Darren Pellin. 42869 was Stan Parag. 428770 was M. Herrera. 42871 was Prairie West. 42872 was to the Prairie Pickleball Shop. 42873 was to Premier Printing Limited. 42874, Quality Vending and Coffee. 42875, Randall Group Homes. 42876, Rural Animal Management Services. 42877, Schultz Construction. 42878, Shred It. 42879, St. Andrew's Septic Service. 42880, Lynn Stephenson. 42881, Justin Sininkra. 42882, Roman Zerbera. Zerbera. 42883, Tech Video Services. 42884, Francis Trafiak. 42885, Carol Vandale. 42886, Waste Connections of Canada. 42887, Worth Canada Limited. Uh, these the resolution stated that uh, be it resolved that the vouchers 42815 to 42887 as listed and totaling $212,936.86 be approved as presented. So uh, what we'll have to do now, Madam Mayor, is we'll have to uh, take this and uh, find out what this means to, uh, to the municipality that these checks were voted against uh, that uh, that have been work has been done and uh, uh, products have been involved. We'll have to bring in our our, our legal and uh, financial to see how we'll deal with this. I will point out in other municipalities that uh, uh, vouchers aren't uh, listed and brought to to council for approval. Something that I wanted to bring up in the new year and deal with. Um, I just want to be clear, we are authorized to make these payments through the financial plan. Work has been completed through purchase order numbers and general accounting principles. So we'll, uh, I don't believe that uh, these minutes, uh, we can move forward with them today. We can uh, ask the MLO, but we will be moving forward with, uh, with our next steps here. And uh, if we have to go back and try to, uh, if this means that we'll be stopping payments or recovering uh, money from all these number of people that uh, that had checks issued to them. Thank you, Mr. CEO. I will go around our virtual council table here. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. So I guess the first thing I'm going to say is why didn't Councillor Perrag vote and why didn't you as chair ask him for his vote if he didn't see his vote? Uh, so we would possibly we would not be in this predicament. Secondly, the reason I voted against it is I've consistently asked for invoices and have not been allowed to see them. So I'm not gonna vote for something that I can't see. Third, you already sent the checks out and I've received my check. Other people have received their checks and have already cashed them. I don't think that this is a matter of uh, the whole world has to stop. I think it's just a matter of approving it, redoing the vote, putting it on another agenda. We approve it, it's done. I mean, these people, a lot of these people have already cashed their checks. Well, I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong and legal has to get involved, I don't think that we should be blamed 
which is what I'm hearing, that we're being blamed for this, uh, everybody should be voting and everybody should make their vote visual so that the chair can pick it up. Thank you. And I'm not blaming Councillor Perrag either. It happens that sometimes uh, we, we put our hand up a little too late or whatever, but it's up to the chair to recognize that and ask us for a vote. I know that's happened to me. And the chair has said to me, Councillor Clyber, you haven't voted. And then I have to say what I voted because I either missed the vote or didn't hear it or some such, some such thing. So uh, I'm not blaming anybody, but, and I shouldn't be blamed either. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clyber. We have a defeated vote. Um, Mr. CEO, is there any comments that you're wanting to make in regards to Councillor Clyber's questions about uh, retracting um, checks, calling back checks, um, and the statement that this is no big deal, that this is a defeated vote of the check payment? I'm not sure uh, yet what this means. Uh, we're going to have to, to talk to our legal department. Uh, we have councillors voting against the checks going out. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not blaming anyone, but people are voting against uh, checks. And if you have a problem with checks, I would advise that uh, maybe you single out which vendor you don't feel should get paid and we can deal with that. But in this case, uh, it was defeated and these checks were voted against, well, these vouchers. So we'll have to determine what, what it means by the approval of the vouchers. It's not as easy as just saying, well, let's have another vote. Uh, so we'll have to spend some money here to find out how we're going to deal with this. Councillor Link had her hand up and then to Councillor Bassetti. Go ahead, Councillor Link. Correct me if I'm wrong. The payments were uh, made, the checks were endorsed by the CAO and the mayor, and they were sent out because the minutes recorded that the vote was carried. Am I wrong? Just like Councillor Clyber, I put my check in the bank already. Um, <clears throat> and I would like to say in response to uh, CAO's uh, comment about invoices, I have spoken uh, to councillors from other municipalities and as a regular course of approving the payment register, they, the invoices are provided and everybody sees every invoice. I'm not making this up. I also oh. was refused oh, invoices. Um, please call the I think a mountain is being made out of a mole hill here. Correction can be done by redoing the vote. What if the vote's uh, not carried again? Why would anybody change their mind? Uh, Why would anyone Bragg vote against? Vote. Why would anyone Counselor vote against? Bragg will vote. I'm not. I don't Why need would, to argue this with you. I think. Why would anyone vote against? Vote. Why would anyone vote against an accounts payable register? Well, I I I had uh, not received responses about invoices either. Um, are you sure? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I, I'd have to challenge, uh, you know, now that we're, we're, uh, we're talking about uh, boards, um, councils, policy, checking Mr. all the invoices. CAO. Get a policy, uh, I'd suggest. Well-run organizations usually don't have the board of directors or the uh, councillors going I through all muted. the invoices. There's uh, checks and controls that go through them. Um, I mean, and again, Madam Mayor, we'll 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 talk to our legal team. Uh, I'm not the one that's voting against the the accounts payable. Am I correct? Have so I I'm going to have to figure out how to, to uh, deal with so this. This could 
Councillor Link, why do you keep interrupting when we have a procedural bylaw regarding interruptions I, and conduct at the table? Three times. So the CAO is, is answering your questions and you're interrupting the response. And so we each I one at a time I speak mean, as per up. our procedural bylaw. I would ask that you respect our procedural bylaw. Okay? And that is why you're being muted because one at a time are speaking. Your questions were asked, you had time to ask, the CAO responded. Uh, in I'm terms of finished. asking our CAO not to follow a resolution of council, I've never heard of something like that. So this was a defeated vote. Two members of council uh, did not approve the checks and two members did and one did not vote. And so now you're saying do a new vote, which could come up defeated. And so two members of council do not want to pay all of the vendors that were listed. And that is now the decision that the CAO has to respect because that is the decision in the minutes. Well, uh, if you didn't want to ridiculous. do that, then you shouldn't vote in that direction. Uh, but now uh, we have to be respectful of the vote and the vote is that those vendors not get paid. So if you are not intending for that to be the outcome of your vote. Councillor Bissetti, you've had your hand up, go ahead. Can we just table 7.5 for till we find out what's going on and keep going with the meeting? Because we can discuss this for another three hours. So as the CAO stated, we will find out what the next procedure is. Let's move on, please. I've got a mover and a seconder on the on those minutes. Ms. Shaw has gone back and looked at those minutes and that vote was defeated. So I don't think we need to table that vote. I think our CAO needs to uh, figure out the next steps. Uh, Councillor Kleiber raised the issue that Councillor Prague did not vote. And so that is a defeated 2-2 two -two vote. Uh, that will be changed in the minutes. There's a mover and a seconder, and we vote that that's what the minutes reflect. The impact of that going forward legally and financially to the municipality, that paying those vendors was defeated by Councillor Link and Councillor Kleiber voting against, we'll have to come back to council and get a legal and financial opinion on that. So, uh, you know, we have to move forward as the minutes reflecting what actually happened at that meeting. Councillor Prague, you had your hand up, go ahead. You're on mute, Councillor Prague. First of all, I'd like to apologize to the administration of st and staff what occurred here. It was not never my intention not to vote or anything like that. But it's it from my point of view, it's vendors and local businesses who suffer when councillors vote not to pay them. I can't understand why council members will vote no when already authorities as part of our financial plan confirmation what was already approved by the financial plan to pay these people. So I don't really understand. It was an honest mistake that was made and never in my term in council, my three terms did ever occur. I don't know if my hand went sideways, which I don't, I don't know. And I don't have no excuses, so I'll accept blame. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Craig. I don't know how you would have voted, wh whether you would have accepted the checks or not. Councillor Link and Councillor Kleiber are uh, assuming that you would have voted yes to accept the checks, um, but their votes are respected and they didn't want to pay these vendors and now there's consequences of that. Um, there was discussion about other municipalities where they get to see through the invoices. Um, the city of Selkirk uh, receives these as information and doesn't vote on them because they're approved as part of the financial plan, all expenditures, and another neighboring municipality receives them as information uh, as well and does not vote on them. So the impact to ours is when members of council don't believe that these vendors should be paid uh, because they don't get to look through the books, um, there's financial risk and consequences of that and our CEO will come back with more information. Uh, I have a mover and a seconder. The uh, minutes have been adjusted to reflect what happened. Uh, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. We are on item 7.6, special meeting of November 20th. And I will read the resolution. 
be it resolved that the minutes of the, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on November 20th, 2021 be approved. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any discussion on the November 20th meeting? Councillor Link and then Councillor Cliver. Well, I see at item resolution 2021-527, item 3.2, that Councillor Cliver is recorded as a no vote on the second reading of the general enforcement bylaw policy. And then we went right to third reading and she is recorded as um, a yes vote. So I'm wondering if the no vote was an error recorded as an error. Ms. Shaw, I will refer that question to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I did uh, do a review of the, the live video because I uh, questioned that result as well in my notes that, that I do see that the, the vote was uh, against for second reading and for for third reading for Councillor Cliver. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Councillor Kleiber, you had a question as well. Go ahead. That is not correct, Ms. Shaw. I just reviewed the tape myself. It's timestamp 138. Uh, the call to the question is asked for. I put my hand up a little late, and then when it was opposed, I took it down immediately. Please go and review the tape once again. That was reading two at 1.38. Thank you. All right, we'll take a 10 minute break and have Ms. Shaw look at that then. We'll recess for 10 minutes and review the tape. Um, and reminder to council members about putting your hand up when the vote's called, if it's late, it might be recorded as an opposition. We'll give Ms. Shaw 10 minutes.
All right, welcome back everyone again. We've had a recess to review a tape again on a confirmation of minutes. Ms. Shaw, I will uh, turn it back to you after you've had the opportunity now to review that tape. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I did take a moment to review that uh, clip. The timestamp is correct of 1.38 uh, for November 20th. And I, I've reviewed several times and I do see the same thing. The call for the vote is, is made uh, for council members' hands clearly rise. Uh, then the call for opposed, and that is when Councillor Cliver's hand raises. Uh, so I believe the minutes accurately reflect the vote for that item. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Councillor Cliver, go ahead. Yeah, I don't agree. I quickly put my hand down. I kind of missed the boat there for a minute, but I don't agree with that. However, you can record it whatever way you, uh, if you're going to record it that way and you don't agree with me, I did vote in favor of this bylaw anyways in the end. So whatever. Thank you. Any other comments for discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Bassetti. As the mover, I see it as Ms. Shaw has put it in the minutes. Thank you. Councillor Pride, go ahead. As a seconder, I see it on Ms. Shaw's side. Thank you. Thank you. I have a mover and a seconder. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. We have 7.7 .7 Board of Revision minutes. Be it resolved that the minutes of the 2022 Board of Revisions held on November 3rd, 2021 be approved as presented. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. No delegations, item eight, number nine, bylaw for consideration. We have second reading of bylaw 2021. Uh, Ms. Shaw, there were some amendments made that were sent to all of council and I will turn it over uh, to Ms. Shaw or the CAO uh, to discuss, Ms. Shaw, to discuss uh, the changes made based on discussion of council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as Council has been supplied in the administration report, uh, and as you remember, on November 20th, we had a special meeting uh, to give first reading to the Code of Conduct for Members of Council Bylaw. Uh, this is an annual review which is required uh, by the Act and regulation. Uh, after the discussion held on the 20th, uh, the further uh, changes were made to the proposed bylaw. Uh, section 8, uh, this was from comments from Councillor Link, where there was some confusion um, on, on who may initiate informal um, resolution. Uh, so we clarified that we matched the language um, that follows in Section 9, uh, saying that um, a council member or an employee of the municipality. And the second change proposed for second reading is in section 10.2. Um, this uh, was from discussion held. What we do is we clarify um, that matters um, in closed in-camera meetings with, of code of conduct matters shall be facilitated the mayor, by the mayor or is delegated by the mayor. And that section 8.3 of the procedural bylaw may be suspended for closed in camera meetings. Um, so those were the two uh, takeaways from uh, the discussion at first reading and that's what we've proposed today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. So as per our procedural bylaw, we will go around the virtual council table here and everybody will have five minutes to discuss the issue um, and then we will read the resolution and move forward. Councillor Link, any further comments regarding the Code of Conduct bylaw? On first reading, I was asked to comment first. So uh, I do have comments, but uh, I think people should have their turn at being first at commenting on this. Are you waiving your comments, Councillor Link? No, I do have comments. But okay, I went go first ahead. the last time. I also oh, I'm to go first this time. Very well. At your request, I will go first again. I have to say that in five minutes, 
I will not be able to address all the concerns that I have with this bylaw. The Association of Manitoba Municipalities Sandbrook states the role and duties of council. Council is a group of elected representatives who make decisions for the municipality. One major role is government. Council is responsible for passing the local bylaws that govern the people and their municipality. Council is responsible for bylaws and policies and to keep decisions clear and consistent for the public, administration and council. I understand the decision to review the code of conduct bylaw was made because it was time for an annual review. I had suggested uh, shortly after it was passed that we review it uh, once everybody was uh, able to take the training, but that never happened. But that's really, really fine. We are having our annual review. Council is responsible for passing the local bylaws. In my view, that means including council members in making contributions to any changes and critiquing the bylaw together. Was council invited to review the code of conduct prior to first reading? No. Were council members asked what they would see as beneficial changes to the code of conduct prior to first meeting? No. The proposed changes to numerous sections of the bylaw came about via administration. When was council afforded the opportunity to discuss these changes amongst themselves? Council did not have such an opportunity. How come? When was, ta when was management tasked to do a review? Who, who, who said, let's, okay, uh, administration, let's have this review. The administration report refers to the council members codes of conduct regulation. The code of conduct we currently have was adopted with a couple of minor changes from the template provided by municipal relations. I am sure that municipal relations made certain that any mandatory regulations were reflected in the template. The need for mandatory regulations in the bylaw is not a sufficient rationale for making changes. At the first reading of council, uh, at the first reading, uh, just like this one, Council members' input is limited to five minutes of response to the entire bylaw and five minutes of comment prior to the vote. Again, when did council members have the opportunity to talk about this bylaw with one another in detail, taking into account different ideas and opinions? That did not happen. Council has not been allowed to discuss the bylaw as a council. Council's obligation to play its role in governance was and is bypassed, it is being bypassed by how a so called review is being conducted only at readings of the bylaw. George Cuff, a respected authority on municipal governance, states the elected official stands at the center of any democracy. Members of the elected body are held to account for all policy decisions. Accountability for results rests inevitably with those elected to office. Therefore, I believe elected officials in the RM of West St. Paul require a true and real opportunity to have input into this code of conduct and bylaw changes. I've used up four minutes and 34 seconds. I'll stop there, but I have another five minutes later on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Um, there were no questions, so I'm assuming that Mishka does not need to reply to that. Councillor Pereg, any further follow-up regarding this bylaw? No, oh, I agree with the changes that were made. Thank you. 
Thank you. Councillor Kleiber. Yes, a couple of questions for Ms. Shaw. Um, who suggested the change to 10.2? Sorry, Councillor Kleiber, you have five minutes and then she'll record the questions and provide an answer and follow up. So go ahead. Uh, we've never done it that way before. Why are we doing that way now? I'd like an answer before I continue on. You have five minutes, Councillor Kleiber. Your statements and questions, Ms. Shaw, will note them. And then how I use my five minutes? Go ahead. You're, you're telling me how I can use my five minutes. I'm asking Ms. Shaw a question. I'd like an answer. And I'm saying she's recording down your questions and we'll respond to you when we're done. We're not going oh, to. Okay, so you're regulating her. how my five minutes goes. Okay. I'm I following the procedural now. bylaw that Council has in terms no, of speaking actually, to the question for five minutes. That's item 17.5 in our procedural bylaw, a no, bylaw passed by the calls. majority of Council, so I'm adhering to that. You have okay, five minutes, actually, go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. That is actually called to the question, has nothing to do with discussion. So you're incorrect on the 17.5. Anyway, Councillor Kleiber, your comments are incorrect, so I'll address your point of order. 17.5 deals with the question. The question at hand is the issue of the code of conduct. The call to the question is actually, when you read through our procedural bylaw, I encourage everyone to take a second review if they haven't looked at it in a while. Voting is section 13, and it says nothing about calling for the question, it's actually the vote. So our procedural bylaw no, makes a distinction between my five minutes. and the question, and the question at hand is the code of conduct. But okay, thank you Christian, for the point of order five and minutes. for asking for that clarification. You have I five minutes as per our procedural bylaw. Go ahead, Councillor Clyde. Okay, you're wasting my five minutes and you interrupted my five minutes. So I'll take that. Your five off. minutes are starting now, Councillor Clyde. I thank answered you. your point of order. Go okay, ahead. Thank please. you very much. Appreciate that. The administration report on section 10.2. Um, you're suspending the procedural bylaw 8.3. Let me read 8.3. All meetings of council shall be chaired by the mayor or in his or her absence by the deputy mayor. If the mayor or deputy mayor is not present at the time scheduled for the meeting, the council may appoint one of its members to chair the meeting. So you want to suspend that so that you, the mayor, as this bylaw change reads, can delegate whoever you like if you don't want to facilitate it. Now, I assume that's because you could be involved in a complaint. But why suspend the bylaw? If you as the mayor, and I shouldn't say you, but if the mayor in the future, you or anyone else is the subject of the complaint, they can now delegate someone who would be sympathetic to their point of view. And therefore, it's not really democratic. It should go back to the bylaw. It should go back to the deputy mayor. And if the deputy mayor is involved in the complaint, then the rest of council has a, a chance to appoint uh, one of its members to change, to chair the meeting. I don't think that um, as delegated by the mayor is a very good procedure at all. With respect to the code of conduct, section 10.4 that you're changing, I'm going to say the following remarks. Section 10.4, which concerns the vote to sanction on this bylaw is not complete. Municipal relations in conjunction with the minister's office has provided us with a chart and instructions that the complainant and respondent should not be voting due to the legal principle of procedural fairness. On our council, complainant and respondent would be recusing themselves and the rest of council would then vote. All three members of council must vote in favor of the sanction in order for the sanction to pass. Complaints according to the minister's office must have only one complainant and one respondent. If there are multiple complaints against the councillor, each one must be filed separately and each one must be voted on separately. This bylaw does not re reflect those procedures and in effect procedural fairness. The problems we have had in the past are related to proper procedures that have not been followed and have not been fair. In the past, there have been some suggestions that council members make or critical or are seen as criticisms. If a member asks for more information, it, they can be accused of harassment or bullying, this vote to sanction now does not reflect the act and voting instruction as has been suggested by the minister's office. Section 10.4 vote is against the legal tenets of procedural fairness 
and will it cause appeals going forward? And I hate to see that because what's going to happen is it's just going to run up more bills and more legal and more everything. I, I don't understand why we can't follow what we've been uh, given by municipal relations. And that is my uh, two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Through the CAO to Ms. Shaw, uh, in terms of some of the questions uh, asked, I'm sure you took notes. I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I certainly did. Uh, the proposed change to 10.2 came from discussion um, of that felt that uh, the delegated um, facilitation of in camera should not be uh, simply directed to the CAO. So we felt that uh, I fe drafted this uh, as delegated by the mayor. Um, I really felt that, that it should not be designated as a, a person, uh, as Ms. Councillor Kleiber has, has said, um, depending on whom is involved in the code of conduct complaint, it, it may not be appropriate to have um, either the, the mayor or the deputy mayor facilitating uh, that portion. So that, that's why we have come to that wording. Um, as far as uh, the clause for the vote, all members of council may vote. Whether you choose to um, take, uh, to abstain or declare a, a conflict would be uh, the councillor's choice. You all may vote. Uh, there has been no um, direction from municipal relations. The act does not say you may not vote. Uh, it, it is available to all members of council. Uh, I, I feel that addresses the, the comments. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Councillor Bracetti, any comments, further questions to our MLO? No, I'm good. How is presented? Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a couple of comments from my point won't be taking up the five minutes i'm sure um, i think the changes are great i think what we have here is uh, basically the same template that the province provided i'll just remind council and and for residents that might not be aware uh, the code of conduct is through legislation so this isn't simply uh, council is sitting down and making a bylaw because uh, we feel like it um, we are uh, legislated to create a code of conduct bylaw uh, by the provincial government, section 83 d of the Municipal Act. Um, and then it's council's responsibility to comply with that code of conduct. Um, and so we are, we are required by legislation to have this. Uh, and the province established a template uh, approved by all municipalities in Manitoba. Um, and so I believe it's uh, as per section 84.1, uh, 2.1, we all have to, as municipalities, um, have a code of conduct bylaw. So the template was established by the provincial government and then minor changes have been made by some municipalities, including our municipality. Uh, those changes that have been brought forward in terms of employees being included, uh, there was some comments at the uh, first reading of this that um, employees should not be included. Section 84.1.2 uh, specifically says that council member conduct is our conduct to each other and our conduct to employees. Um, so this is not something that uh, Ms. Shaw is creating and adding into our bylaw. This was part of the uh, initial template shared by the province for a code of conduct bylaw. And this is actually straight out of the legislation section 84.12, that it is our conduct towards employees. So I think as the city of Brandon has done, it makes sense that if our conduct towards employees is not respectful, that they have the ability to submit a complaint as well. Um, there's been questions raised about voting. Um, the Municipal Act is really clear, Section 135, about the necessity for quorum. And so if we are put in a situation where we can't have, to, we have two members of council left to vote, we don't have quorum, which would not then be in compliance with Section 135. So the reality is that uh, the intake reviewer is accepting complaints from multiple parties. And now we have to adjust to that to make sure that we are in compliance with the Municipal Act and that we're voting based on quorum. Um, so, you know, I, I encourage everybody to review uh, members at this council table that might be confused about the process. 
The code of conduct is uh, highlighted in section 84, 83 of the uh, Municipal Act and we're following that act. Um, the code of conduct bylaw in front of us today is based on the template from the provincial government, reviewed by AMM and presented to council. Um, so this is not a West St. Paul document. This is adjusted uh, based on the recommendations of Ms. Shaw, who has consulted with municipal relations, which she discussed with council at the last meeting. Uh, section 10.2, I'm not sure why there would be concerns about that. Closed in-camera meetings dealing with code of conduct matters shall be facilitated by the mayor. Well, as per our procedural bylaw and as per the municipal act, the mayor is always the chair. Now, or as designate, designated by the mayor and section and section 88.3 of the procedural bylaw may be suspended. So we've received legal information on this. The, the mayor is always the chair unless delegated otherwise. So this is consistent with the Municipal Act, it's consistent with our process and that item has been reviewed by legal. So certainly if I'm involved in a complaint as the complainant or the respondent, I'm not wanting to facilitate discussion. This has been part of all of our resolutions uh, in terms of having our CAO facilitate because on complaints thus far, um, the CAO is not able to uh, submit complaints or participate and is a neutral body in that. Um, now that the code has been, now that we've changed possibly our bylaw, if approved by council, and the CAO is able to submit complaints, uh, he might not be the ideal person to facilitate discussion, so the mayor would appoint the deputy or someone else. So um, this, this is consistent with the Municipal Act, and I don't see any concerns with that. We've all had our five minutes to be able to uh, comment on, and I will read the resolution uh, regarding this bylaw. Could I have a recorded vote, please? Thank Request you. for a recorded vote from Councillor Kleiber. Thank you. Right. Be it resolved that the bylaw 2021-13 being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to establish and regulate a code of conduct for members of council and repeal bylaw number 2020-10 be read a second time. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Pereg, seconded by Councillor Dracetti. Any further discussion? Councillor Link. Do I have another five minutes? Another five minutes. Thank you. I heard you, Mayor, say on November 15th and again tonight that there could be no more than one complainant together. There could be more than one complainant together making the same complaint about a respondent. That does not reconcile with the message dated February 17th from the intake company that prescribed, and this is about process, there's nothing in camera content about this. The prescribed code of conduct complaint form as developed by the province of Manitoba only contemplates the filing of a complaint by one member of council and that code of conduct complaints filed by multiple members of council will be recommended to be dismissed. Now I'm going to re, uh, uh, go on to the vote, just as Councillor Clyber said in her presentation. Uh, the vote is very concerning. Municipal Relations sent out a bulletin shortly after Bill 53 was passed and came into force on May 20th. The bulletin was an, quote, an important notice to all elected officials and CAOs in the province, everybody, everybody, every council in the, in the Manitoba got this bulletin. Legislative amendments to council members' codes of conduct regarding the vote to approve sanctions were made. I quote, the municipal council code of conduct resolution process will allow a council with fewer than seven members to approve sanctions with a simple majority. This change will allow both parties to a code of conduct complaint to recuse themselves from the vote to sanction, thereby maintaining procedural fairness throughout the resolution process. Procedural fairness. Our council is composed of five members. Therefore, the legislative change applies to our council. Legislation allows complainant and respondent to recuse. Section 10.4 of the proposed bylaw is contrary to legislation. It allows all members to vote. Therefore, the legislative change 
is not reflected in the proposed bylaw. In fact, the suggested bylaw change does not maintain procedural fairness throughout the resolution process. The Municipal Statutes Amendment Act had frequently asked questions. These were sent to RMs as well. They came out on June, in June of 2021. And here's a quote. The amendments ensure procedural fairness by enabling both parties to a complaint to recuse themselves from a vote for sanctions. By not following Bill 53 legislation, this council will be throwing out procedural fairness. I want to add that council was not sent this municipal relations bulletin, nor was the uh, frequently asked questions on Bill 53 sent to council. I found them by accident much later than when they were sent out to all municipalities in the province. I found them when looking at another municipality's agenda. Following that discovery, I sent an email to council members and administration suggesting we clarify the vote by reviewing these documents and there was no follow up. Now I'm gonna go ahead to another point. Uh, references to employees and individuals participating in this code of conduct bylaw should be removed. The Association of Manitoba Municipalities Handbook states that council code of conduct should not duplicate things that are already covered by other laws. These laws have their own processes and penalties to deal with violations that are beyond council's authority. For example, the public interest disclosure, the Whistleblower Protection Amendment Act, which came into force in 2018. It facilitates the disclosure and investigation of significant and serious wrongdoing in relation to public bodies and protects persons who make disclosures from reprisals. This act applies to employees of government departments. Municipalities and local government districts could opt into this act. Employees of municipalities that have chosen to opt in would be able to make a disclosure of wrongdoing and then would be afforded the reprisal protections provided under their RM. The RM did not opt to get into PETA. Our employees do not have any protection from PETA and they could have. We're looking out for the employees. An example of duplication of protection of employees in the Workplace Health and Safety Act, a guide for presenting Preventing harassment in the workplace is available through Safe Work Manitoba. This guide states that employees have a right to file a complaint through the Human Rights Commission. It suggests employees have a policy to discourage harassment in the workplace. In fact, the RM has had an anti-harassment and respectful workplace policy since May of 2010. Amongst other things, it protects employee against abuses of power, such as humiliation, intimidation, threats and coercion. I believe the codes of conduct for members of council was aimed at serving and guiding council members. Training was provided by municipal relations to council members. In fact, the training was a must to be completed by a deadline after which participation on council could not be allowed until training was completed. Training was not offered or provided to employees because they are not elected officials. Employees should not be included in this bylaw. Again, AMM. Uh, we're just at the six minute mark. All right, AMM, I'll just close my last sentence. AMM says that council code of conduct should not duplicate things that are already covered by other bylaws. These laws have their own processes and penalties to deal with violations that are beyond council's authority. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Seo or Ms. Shaw, anything that you're wanting to speak to regarding questions, comments there? Uh, well, yeah, I can speak to you. I, I made some notes here. Um, we've had a, a, a series of, of uh, code of conducts in Manitoba take place that had multiple, uh, multiple people do one complaint. So we, we've seen it in the East and in, in our own uh, municipality where 
uh, two members submitted uh, a, a code of conduct and, and both was, both were accepted as one. So um, I think we have to be uh, prepared for that. So we have to allow for that. Uh, there is nothing that, that stops. It says the complainant or the respondent cannot vote. So uh, it, the, the words uh, shall and uh, are used a number of times. And I think sim simply that, uh, uh, you know, I'm hearing a lot of code of conduct. If we simply are respectful that uh, uh, the code of conduct shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be an issue, we shouldn't be having any code of conducts. Thank you, Mr. CL. Councillor Kleiber, any follow-up comments? If I have follow-up, I would put my hand up, but thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any additional comments? I don't know why it's so that we can't have employees in the, um, added to it. I can't see why because they work for the municipality and they need to be treated fairly. That's my comment, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pray. Councillor Bussetti, any further comments regarding this bylaw? Thank you, Madam Mayor, for going around the table. There's no need to put our hands up for this. Thank you for that. Um, I have problems with certain members of council are saying that the intake reviewer does not accept multiple complaints it's happened so as the cao has stated it has happened it's being accepted so to be ready for that i have no issue with that um the next thing regarding the the two parties or three parties whatever it is being pulled from the vote what is the difference it cancels itself out but it gives us that chance of being in quorum if one person is not in we are still there I'm going to stop my comment there. Um, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bracetti. We've all had an opportunity to go around a second time for additional comments. Um, a couple of comments on my part uh, in terms of treating uh, council members, treating uh, employees with respect. Um, that should not be an issue for complaints if we are all treating municipal employees with respect. Comments were made about workplace health and safety. My understanding is workplace health and safety holds all of council accountable if an employee is not treated respectfully. Uh, I don't think it's appropriate that all of council be held accountable. And this really, if there's a certain member of our council that is not treating employees with respect, then they should be held accountable. Um, nobody should have any issue in terms of complying with the council code of conduct. It establishes standards and values that uh, you'll be expected to meet in carrying out your duties. There's clear guidelines for acceptable behavior. We have had two breaches of code of conduct, unfortunately. Uh, those aren't just matters of difference of opinion or I get to speak my truth. Um, there's a whole process involved in, in standards of behavior that have been established by the province of Manitoba. Um, we have their bylaw template that we use to follow those standards. It's through the Municipal Act and it's through our Code of Conduct bylaw that every municipality must adopt. Um, and if there are violations, there's a very clear process involved for investigation or mediation where a third party becomes involved uh, to address that. And the criteria they look at is the criteria outlined in the Code of Conduct as per the provincial government regulations. So, if there are council members that are concerned with this process, and I've heard a number of times that this doesn't work and, and this bylaw isn't effective, um, it's individual conduct that, that needs to be in adherence to this bylaw. Um, and so if third party investigators have come in and found contravention to the bylaw, that is a process, um, you know, that those are serious offenses and we have followed the process outlined by the province. So. Um, these are, these are processes we should welcome for the safety of each other, for the safety of our staff. And, you know, we have professional roles in this community and should be treating one another with respect and, and adhering to our code of conduct bylaw. Um, and it is disgraceful to have members of council that have been found guilty for contravention of this bylaw when behavior is clearly outlined. Um, that's not opinion. 
um, those are human resource investigations that have come out uh, and it's cost our taxpayers money and it's created an unsafe workplace. So um, it's unfortunate that bylaws like this need to be put into place, uh, but they clearly do. We've all had our opportunity to comment and we are at, uh, I have a mover and a seconder on this bylaw uh, reading and I uh, will ask for a recorded vote and I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Ms. Shaw, just to keep me on track here, am I on 9.2 or 10.1? 9.2, Madam Mayor. 9.2? Thank you. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-13 being a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul to establish and regulate a code of conduct for members of council and repeal bylaw number 2020-10 be read a third and final time signed, sealed and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Preg. Any further discussion, I will go around the table. Councillor Brissetti, any further discussion on this issue? Councillor Craig, no, any further discussion on this issue? No, thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any further discussion on this issue? I don't know if we've just been discussing this so long that I don't remember, but I, I thought we already did that vote, the third vote, and I asked for a recorded vote on the second bylaw reading, if you'll recall. So I'm very confused now, and it's hard to turn back the tape, but okay, we can do it a, another time. Um, as far as the... So, Councillor Kleiber, I'll just address your point of order. Ms. Shaw, am I on 9.2? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, we are on item 9.2. Uh, Councillor Kleiber did re uh, request the recorded vote. Uh, you also requested the recorded vote, but the minutes will show Councillor Kleiber's request. Uh, that was a 3-2 vote in favour for second reading. We are now on third reading of bylaw 2021-13, item 9.2. Okay, that's why I was confused that you asked for a recorded vote because I thought but it already is recorded on the third reading. Um, I will say this, there have been comments about a complaint where two councillors complained against another councillor. I will say that the intake reviews letter said that that is not normal and that that would not be done again. And that intake review letter is online. People can go and look at it. And he said, we're not doing this again. I'll allow it this one time. So people need to be aware of that. Council needs to be aware of that, that that was his decision. Don't know that going forward, that's gonna happen. But um, that was the decision and the comments that he made as the reviewer. Thank you. Councillor Link, I'll give you your five minutes. I'm wondering, Madam Mayor, if you recall the vote on sanction for the complaint against myself by Councillors Pereg and Busetti. And I wonder if you recall the reason that no sanctions uh, were recommended by the investigator and the reasons for the fact that no sanctions were uh, recommended. Councillor Link, I just wanna caution you because the report to council uh, and the report on the investigations is confidential information. But the um, resolution is not. The resolution is minutes. not, but so I'm just providing a caution. If you're if you're able to speak about resolutions, absolutely. Um, if you're referring to the investigators' reasoning for no sanctions or things that are outside of the resolutions, I'm just cautioning you uh, regarding was, code of confidentiality. It was included in the resolutions, and uh, I, I would suggest that perhaps that resolution needs to be reread. Um, the effects were minimal. The effects on the complainant, minimal. So there were no sanctions. Thank you. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Councillor Link, in terms of violation was found in a breach of the code of conduct. 
So resolutions were read that there was a breach and a violation of the code of conduct in terms of following proper process and procedure. Um, but the personal impact you're saying to the complainants was minimal, so there were no sanctions. That's correct. Okay. That's correct, Madam Mayor. And um, therefore, how terribly serious was this to use up a lot of time and effort and money? So, you know, if you're concerned about the process and in terms of time and effort and money, that because two individuals were not specifically impacted, it's okay to not follow bylaws and legislation put forward by the province? That's not what I'm saying. So and the, I did write a letter to all of council uh, with my reaction to this. Um, but... Um, thank you, Councillor Link. Thank you. Everyone's had five minutes to comment. Um, my further comments would be the fact is multiple complaints are being accepted by the intake officer. They've been accepted from this municipality and from other municipalities. I find it extremely troubling that a member of council would say, what's the big deal that I don't follow process and procedure and that I was found in contravention of the code of conduct bylaw? What's the harm? So if the complainants are not harmed or damaged, we don't have to follow the bylaws in this community. I think that doesn't set a very good example for our residents. We're expected to follow the code of conduct bylaw. Um, if there's been breaches of it, there have been serious breaches. We don't get to choose and pick that we decide we're not going to follow bylaws. So to diminish that and belittle it, that what's the big deal if I'm in breach of code of conduct and I don't follow process and our bylaw um, because the complainants weren't harmed and there were no sanctions. Um, the big deal is we are legislated to follow the Code of Conduct bylaw as per the Municipal Act, as per our own Code of Conduct bylaw that we vote on in three readings. So to simply say what's the big deal, um, you know, a, a, an HR consultant, third party HR arm's length consultant found two members of this council in breach of Code of Conduct. Um, that's serious. It's unfortunate if members of council don't take that serious, but the province certainly does, and most members of this council certainly do. I certainly do. Madam Mayor. We've all had an opportunity to comment and had our five minutes um, to comment, and so I know Councillor Brissetti, you had your hand up. No further comment as well. Councillor Link, no further comment. I uh, have a mover and a seconder on this. Uh, I will ask for a recorded vote. And as third bylaw, we have a recorded vote anyway. And I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. I'm going to request a 10 minute break here, grab a water again, and then we'll move on to the next issue. So, 10 minutes. Thank you.
Thank you for your patience for those watching at home. We are on item 10.1 for our agenda this evening accounts. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that vouchers 42888 to 42940 as listed and totaling $558,504.54 be approved as presented and manual payment totaling $6,924.24 be approved as presented. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded by Councillor Prag. Any discussion? Councillor Link? No, there's no, I have no points for discussion. Thank uh, you. Other, other than, sorry, I, I sent in the revised questions. They were not fully answered. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber? Yes, uh, Mr. Mike Valcourt, who's doing the mural. Uh, again, I'm gonna ask this question again. When will council see a conceptual drawing of the mural? So we know what it looks like before it's painted. Any ideas on that? Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. I'll refer your question to our CAO regarding that process. Yeah, the, the mural's done. The mural has been completed and, and uh, and it's planned for next week to uh, uh, to uh, to introduce the the mural to public. So we'll have uh, some groups from the community there. Council will be invited, and we're doing it, uh, I believe, at noon on uh, next Tuesday. So uh, the mural's painted. The graffiti has been taken down under the bridge, and uh, yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's too bad that we didn't get to see it before it was painted. A uh, second question is the GST um, the question was asked by Councillor Link. Um, was there any GST included in that invoice uh, from Mr. Valcourt? Councillor Kleiber, any other questions? The CEO is making note and so your five minutes to ask questions or comment. Mr. CEO, make note. Go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. That's what I just asked. I just asked, is there any GST added to that total? That was asked by email and it was not responded to. My concern here, and I, I'm going to ask that Mr. Volkert's payment be removed until we find that out because we're not supposed to be paying people directly unless they have a GST number or a business number. And so I would like that confirmed before that payment goes through. Um, the DD West LLP, that is, um, is that not Orville Curry's firm to the CAO? Are those all of your questions, Councillor Kleiber? Well, I have a follow-up question because you posted various legal matters, and I believe that's Orville Curry's firm, and that would have been the general bylaw enforcement on two separate dates. So why wouldn't we just post that that was for uh, partially general bylaw enforcement and uh, or the general bylaw, whatever, you know what I mean, the, uh, the bylaw no, that Chris took in mean. on. I'm, I'm please just wait a minute and then various because I think she did uh, two days. So obviously some of those charges are going to be for that. Now, if I'm correct, if that's where we'll for each firm. Now go ahead, please. Sorry, I'm done. Thank you, Councillor Cliver, Mr. CAO. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have the, the documents in front of me, but I don't believe that the, uh, Mike Belcourt did charge GST. I'd have to uh, check that. And uh, yes, that is Orville Curry works at the firm DD West LLP. So wasn't that for the general bylaw enforcement bylaw? For Krista, I think her name is. She works there too, yeah. Well, she was here for two days. So wouldn't that, wouldn't those costs be associated with that? So just a point of order here, Councillor Kleiber, did you submit these questions in advance to our CAO as is our process for the council members of West St. Paul? I didn't well, members of council, process is also members that of any council. questions regarding finance would be copied to all of us. Did you submit these in advance to give our CAO the opportunity to look through the accounts to accurately answer your questions? 
Uh, the GST one certainly was. I'm just asking a point of description. I'm not asking to dispute the amount. I'm just, just asking about description. Why well, can, can we not have more of a pointed description other than various? I mean, it's quite obvious to me that this should be about the general bylaw enforcement bylaw. So it would be, I think, more transparent if we put down what it was actually for. And if, if that's the bulk of it and there's something extra, then you can put various miscellaneous. But in, in, in order to be transparent, we should be doing it what that was for instead of just writing various legal matters. Again, that's my opinion. And if you'd like me to put that in an email, I will be happy to do so. Thank you. Oh, and Councilor I'd like Perez. a recorded vote today. Councillor Craig, any questions, comments regarding the pay, uh, account? No questions, thank you. Councillor Bussetti, any comments regarding accounts? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple comments. I'm hoping council approves the checks. Um, as our CAO stated, uh, all of the checks are uh, part of the financial plan uh, that is approved by council. Um, and when it's not, it's clarified. Uh, and so we've had clarification on the uh, Valcourt check that that's under beautification for restoring uh, graffiti and paint, uh, covering up graffiti that happened in our community. Um, so questions have been asked and answered. Um, and so hopefully council is supportive of the check so that all of the vendors listed here today um, can receive payment. Unfortunately, we've run into previous issues where now people might not be paid. Um, so we have a financial plan. We approve projects as part of that financial plan. We approve operating expenses as part of that financial plan under the guidance of the province and the requirements that they have. And so hopefully council can approve the checks so that these vendors can be paid. We've all had five minutes to speak, Councillor Kleiber, um, and so we're going to be fair that we've all had our opportunity. Thank you. And I have a mover and a seconder on this. I'm going to ask for a recorded vote and call for the question. All those in favor? And opposed? I already asked for a recorded vote. And that is carried. Question. Thank you. These people can be paid this month. I asked for a recorded vote. We now have you. item 11, the payroll monthly statement. Be it resolved that the payroll for the month of October as follows be approved as presented. Can I get a mover, please? Move by Councillor Bussetti, seconded Councillor Preg. Any discussion on the payroll for our staff being paid? Like the checks, this comes out of our financial plan and the payment for the year for our staff is approved as part of our West St. Paul financial plan that is then sent to the province for authorization. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. I still haven't seen a one payroll register since I've been councillor. I'd like to see at least one. Um, and as far as the GST on Mike Valcourt, I have to tell you that if no GST is Mr. Kleiber, paid, we're not talking about an issue. We're speaking to the question and as per procedural bylaw, um, I know there's some people on council that don't think we need to follow bylaws, but I assure you that we do. Um, and so every member is to speak to the question and the question right now is the payroll. Okay, you interrupted me. Yeah, I interrupted um, you because you were not speaking to the question. And so we all need to speak to the question and it's payroll. We're not speaking to accounts right now, just to clarify. And yeah, so that's section 17.4 out of our procedural no. bylaw as a point of order for you. Okay, well, you didn't let me respond on the last one. You wouldn't go around again and let me speak. Because we're being um, as fair as and we each get five again, minutes. Again, it's really me? important that we follow our procedural I'm bylaw. Speaking. Okay, okay, let me speak. Thank you. Again, I'll reiterate, I haven't seen a payroll register yet. I'd like to see a payroll register and then I feel comfortable approving payroll. Thank you. Mr. CAO, in terms of seeing payroll register, I'm not sure what Councillor Kleiber is speaking of. Is there any um, comments that you can make to that? Um, what we're seeing here is the gross payroll uh, for the period ending, uh, we've got Office Public Works Recreation, 69,000, October 1st. Office Public Works Recreation, October 15th. Firefighters, October 31st, $25,331.25. Council, October 31st, $9,640.19. Total net payroll for this period, 
$163,040.13. We're seeing the payroll for what we're paying, the amounts broken down by each department. Um, so not saying that we're not seeing the payroll, uh, we're seeing it broke down by departments. Um, and the rest of that is the responsibility of our uh, Director of Finance. Are we missing anything here, Mr. CAO? We're getting a breakdown. I don't believe so, Madam Mayor. This is the way that we've uh, been doing it since the 12 years I was here. We don't, uh, we don't list individuals' uh, payroll in the agenda. We never have. Uh, if that's the will of council, I'll have to go back to, uh, uh, to legal and to, to uh, uh, Freedom of Information Act and, and see, uh, uh, see what uh, the result is there. Um, I don't, I don't believe at the city of Winnipeg that the payroll register shows everybody that gets paid. Uh, I believe that there's uh, 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 legislation that anyone that makes over $75,000 a year is listed at the end of the year, but I don't believe uh, uh, most elected officials uh, are privy to, to uh, each and every paycheck on the register. Uh, if that's what Councillor Kleiber wants me to look into, I will spend some of my time in the near future looking into that. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. CAO. I would just remind you that unless there's a resolution of council to do so, that not to spend your time on that, that there's resolutions of council directing you otherwise. Councillor Bersetti, any comments regarding payroll? We did the work, let's pay him. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pregg. No, no questions, thank you. Councillor Link, any questions? No, I have no questions. Thank you. Only comment from me is I know there's been votes against the payroll in the past, um, voting against our staff being paid. I, everyone's entitled to their own opinion and their own vote, but I would say that that's not very appropriate given that these uh, payments have been already approved as part of our financial plan, where we see the operating expenses including the department salaries for each one. I would hope that council tonight would like to approve paying our office and public works and recreation, as well as our firefighters um, and council. So I would hope there's support for this for our staff. I will call for a recorded vote and I will call for the vote. All those in favor, opposed, and that is carried. All right. We are down now to item 12, 12.1, financial statements for the period ending September 30th. I will read the resolution and then uh, we have uh, Ms. Shahada, our Director of Finance here uh, with us as well and uh, we can discuss. Be it resolved that the Council of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul accept the financial statements for the period ending September 30th, 2021. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Pregg, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Uh, Mr. CAO, I'm going to turn it over to you and Ms. Shahada uh, to see if there's anything else that you're wanting to add for clarification before going around the council table to see if there's any questions. No, I don't have anything to add. Uh, I'll hand it over to Crystal. She can walk you through the financial statements or take questions, whatever uh, council decides. Thanks for joining us, Ms. Shahada, on your evening. So is there anything that you're wanting to add or walk council through, or are you just wanting to take questions? I will leave that up to you. Um, I'd like to just add that uh, the statements are in a good position. We are currently in a surplus position of just over 3.1 million. Um, other than that, I think everything's great. Uh, we're within budget. Um, I don't have anything further to discuss. There's no issues uh, that are present. I'm open to questions. Thank you, Ms. Shahada. I will go around our council table. Councillor Link, any questions? Uh, Ms. Shahada, uh, how did that 3.1 million surplus come about? How did that uh, materialize? That's my first question. 
Yes. So if you can take a look on your general operating fund statement of operations, you will see there uh, page one and page two are our revenue. Page three and four are expenses. So we have more revenues currently than expenses. That will change as the year progresses. This is a picture of where the RM sits as of September 30th. So there were no specific surprises. It's just a variety of, uh, of accounts that are going to end up changing. Is that? Correct. Uh, we do have um, an increase in added taxes for this year. Uh, as you can see on our statement of operations on page one, you'll see that we received 1.1 million in added taxes. So that contributes significantly to our surplus for 2021. Please don't just uh, construe this as a criticism of you. It's a criticism of me, Ms. Shehuda. But I found it very difficult to look at this and look at the budget and understand the comparison that I'm supposed to get out of this. I, I find a lot less detail in, well, in, in some respects. For instance, the, expo the expenses are not broken down as they are in the budget. Um, there's a few things about administration, but the office, the legal, the audit, and so on and so forth, we, we are not updated on individual um, lines. And I was hoping to see that because it would have made, it would have uh, been more easy for me to understand. Um, uh, do, do, do you understand why I'm finding this difficult? Yes, I understand the two documents do look different. Um, what we are required to report to the province is completely different from our internal reporting. Uh, the budget that is presented in the budget uh, column on the statement of operations is exactly the same budget as presented in our annual budget. Uh, it's more condensed in this statement yes. that we present today. Um, the overall picture is the same. We do have uh, our departments separated for expenses starting on page three for administration, protective services, and so on. Um, and we do have the major categories uh, separated. So we have the wages and benefits, for example, as well as maintenance materials and supplies, and so on. Yeah, but some things are just don't appear there. Um, Every, everything, yes, I'm sorry to hear that, but everything that has been presented at budget time is in this statement as well. So, uh, but I can't make, be the judge of that because I can't see the police, uh, the EMO, the 911, and so on and so forth in protective services. So I have to, um, I imagine that, but I can't see it. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any further questions for Ms. Shahada? Yes, I just have to flip the page a few times. Um, um, page four, could you please talk about um, the trans total transfers in? Um, Could you please explain your records there? Uh, yes, so the total transfers in our transfers uh, in from budget. These are our capital expenditures that were approved during capital budget. Um, so this is just moving the funds for what we've already spent into operating to offset those expenses. Oh, okay, so what uh, capital expenditures have not been um, through the books yet? I don't have a detailed record of that with me, um, but it's all the capital budget expenditures that were approved during um, budget deliberations. Uh, that includes trails, uh, some equipment purchases, um, and and so on. Okay, but we that, can't. Yeah, you can you, we you can find the, a detailed specifics. Pardon. Right. We can't see specifics. 
Yeah, I don't, yes, I don't have that information okay. right in front of me right now. All right. Um, now, there's a, a minus figure beside total transfer to reserves. Um, there's a minus figure of the percentage is 243.83% variance. Could you right. talk about that? Yes, yeah, so these are the transfers to the reserves. So these are revenues that we've uh, received on the revenue side. They are shown on page one, um, and they're part of the, the grants, uh, also capital development fees. Um, uh, sorry, I, that's basically it. So anything that we've received through capital development uh, and provincial and federal grants, we take those funds and transfer them over to our reserves. So such as gas tax um, or um, capital development fees from any kind of developments um, that are required to pay their fees for 2021, as well as uh, any water reserves. So that's water connections. Uh, we're required to collect uh, an ERU fee. Um, that's automatically transferred as well to the water reserve. So there's a lot to come uh, to, to be transferred yet. No, uh, so the reason why you're seeing a negative is our budget, uh, for example, capital development was 200,000. We've received so far as of September 30th, 970,000 in capital development fees. So we've received a revenue of 970. We've, al we've also transferred that 970 over to the reserve. So it, it'll show as a negative variance. This section here does not affect our surplus. It's an in and an out. You have an in in the revenue and an out in your expense. Thank you, Councillor Link. We're at six minutes, so I'm going to move on and make sure that all council members get an opportunity to ask. Oh, I didn't know we were questions. only allowed five minutes to ask questions on this. Forgive me. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Ms. Shahada? I guess I missed a joke because some people were laughing there. Um, okay, um, Mishawada, page one, general operating fund. Um, you said there was a one point, uh, there, there's a variance of 727,192.33 under taxes added to roll. Those are supplementary taxes, are they? Correct. And those are the ones we get to keep, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so that's, that is then considered excess according to what we budgeted. Right. Page three. Um, when I go through the budget, I have this nice, very detailed document. Yes. Um, when I go here, I'm just getting the totals, right? It's a summary of that detailed document that you had in your head, right. yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting total, uh, there's, but they're, they're not broken up as Councillor Link said, you know, because on some of these we have equipment fuel and so forth. It's hard for me to know where we have excess and why we have excess. So in section number one, expenses, general government, we're in excess of 659,000. Now I know that you, uh, the total there was 1.818 under our budget. And I checked that and it's right on the money with those two sections together. Um, question for you, this is for September 30th. So we have October, November, December. So mm -hmm. we still have three months left, but it looks to me like we have, even if we average that out over nine months, we're still gonna have a pretty big excess there. Is that correct? Not necessarily. It depends on what expenses we have coming up. Um, it depends, legal expenses, uh, professional contracts. Um, what professional contracts would we have that would be? Some of those would include um, our advertising, our newsletters, um, our, um, sorry, our uh, equipment rental for our uh, printers, um, as well as um, the maintenance and materials and supplies. So that could be building maintenance, uh, janitorial cleaning supplies, uh, those type of maintenance type items to maintain the municipal administration building. So even if we averaged it over nine months, let's say the numbers, because I took 937 
and average it over nine months, and it's $104,000 per month. Even if I added that in uh, at $312,000, that would still leave me with a surplus of $347,000. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering about that because wages and benefits should be static. Council expenses, we can't necessarily uh, know other than our salaries, but it looks like we have quite an excess there even for council expenses. Protective services, same thing. Um, it looks like we have a big excess there, even if I, um, I do it over three, do the next three months and average it out, we still have an excess of about 70,000. Same with transportation, same with environmental health. Handy van number five, we're way under budget on that one. I guess it has not been used. Is that kind of what's happening there? Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah, environmental development services, uh, we're, um, we're $198,000 in variance. Now I know some of them we're gonna have like three months that have to be added in there. So even if we allowed for $100,000, we'd still have an excess there. So it looks to me like we're, our operating budget is, is uh, despite the actual supplementary, we're, we're having excesses, is that correct? Uh, by the looks of this statement, that is correct, but that's not necessarily how it's going to end up. Uh, don't we'll see, forget, right? A lot of the projects are wrapping up at the end of the year, so you will start to see an influx of expenses. Some of the larger bills will start to come through now. Okay. So the reason I asked for this uh, financial statement is because we haven't still received our June 30th from last year. And is that on track for coming up pretty soon? Uh, I can't speak for I for what um, reporting was presented to council while I was on leave. Um, right. 2020 year end, I am currently in the process of, and that's all I can speak towards. Okay, um, so we should have that coming up pretty quick if you're working on it. I'm in the process, yes. Okay, thank you for uh, providing us that information and that very detailed report. Uh, well, at least with the, with the, um, subheadings and it was it was then nice to follow and and connect with the original budget expenditure so it gives me a good idea that we should you know given the supplementary taxes have some kind of surplus this year correct yes i'm anticipating i know and i know that you had said at the budget that you were concerned about that um you didn't know how covid would go so it's a, a positive thing that we're coming out ahead yes thank you mr water Appreciate Thank all you, you do. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bassetti, any questions, comments for our finance director? Well, I'm gonna agree with Councillor Kleiber here that it's good to see that our finances are in good good order and that we are gonna show uh, in the plus that we're, we're staying in a good, what we budgeted. Uh, and I'd like to also give a kudos out, I guess, to our managers and stuff good tenders. That's all I have to say. And thank you, Crystal. Um, thank you again. Thank you, Councillor Parag. Thank you, Crystal, for your hard work and dedication to the RM. And I must thank the CEO. He's in charge on top there to see that all his managers are under him answering. And that will be above Budget. Thank you, Mr. CEO, for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to commend you. This is great. The work is great. Council gets uh, updates if anything's uh, going to be over, uh, and we see the different uh, tenders come to Council. Um, and I'm not surprised uh, at the good work that you're doing and the different departments. Uh, I'm not surprised we've been uh, four years now uh, with a surplus, with surpluses. So that's good news uh, and, and good to see. Um, and we've also had some projects that haven't gone forward. So council's uh, been made aware of that. Um, there's been lots of discussion about uh, problems, uh, concerns raised, council members not voting on checks and raising a lot of concerns. And what you're telling us is that, is that we're in exceptional financial uh, position and and that's the information we've been receiving all along so thank you thank you for your hard work and the CEO as well and all our department staff they've been saving uh, our residents thousands of dollars 
and we're always updated on that. Lots of things coming in under tender and, and great work being done. So, so thank you. I have a mover and a seconder on this item. Everybody's had an opportunity to ask questions and speak to the item. I will ask for a recorded vote and I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you, Ms. Shahada, for being available tonight for us. Thank you. All right, we are on item 13, CAO reports. I'll read the resolution and then we can discuss. Be it resolved that the Council of the Roman Municipality of West St. Paul accept the CAO report as information. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pregg, seconded Councillor Brissetti. We have CAO October report. Uh, I'll go around the council table and see if there are any questions regarding the CAO council CAO report, which includes the CAO as well as uh, his staff. Councillor Link, any questions regarding the CAO report? Well, a comment. Um, on October the 14th, I have an email from CAO uh, in regards to about role descriptions for staff members, um, which were promised. And um, uh, she says that I believe you are referring to job descriptions. Um, this is on the list of things to do, but it is a low priority. This was back in October 14th, and I don't see it on even a low priority on your list of things that you attend to. Very disappointed on that. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Do we have a resolution asking the council, the uh, CAO to dig up uh, job descriptions? Is there a resolution of council directing him to do so? I don't believe so, uh, Madam Mayor. I asked him at a meeting and he said, that'll be no problem. Uh, it won't be right away. It'll be a few weeks, but I'll get to it. That, that wasn't a problem. Uh, that's my uh, on your behalf, I will add this to an upcoming agenda for resolution of council. Uh, I know our CEO is working on lots of activities. And so if he is uh, acting based on resolution of council and that is the proper process to follow, then we'll put that on as a resolution and council can vote on that issue. As Thank you please, you. Madam Mayor, as you please. You. Councilor Bersetti, any uh, questions, comments regarding the CAO's report to council? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions, comments regarding the CAO's report? No, thank you. Councillor Prague? No, thank you. Thank you. I just have a couple of comments, not questions. Um, I notice uh, a lot of staff education, and so I want to commend the CAO and, and the staff for um, always working to be more educated and take different programs. Um, we're always asking uh, a lot of questions and, and relying on their expertise. Um, and so there's a lot of training and education here that we uh, budgeted for as part of our financial plan, and it's wonderful to see staff taking advantage of that. Um, particularly, you know, we're dealing with some very challenging issues. Um, our municipal legislative officer took COVID vaccination policy and the workplace in October um, and human rights and COVID-19 vaccine policies in the workplace uh, the following week. And so it's very, uh, it's very important that our staff are working to be educated and when they're creating policies for us to review and approve. And so I want to commend them on that. Um, I also want to make note that if we look under the fire department, that our fire department have uh, answered 176 calls year to date. Um, they're doing a really great job and uh, thank you to those members of council who supported them getting paid today. Recreation director, um, just talking about, I, I'm wanting to uh, commend her and our community services officer, Terry Ferguson and Bev Bragg, uh, who works at Sonova Center and is a community volunteer. They did a fantastic job at our Remembrance Day service. Um, I want to thank them and commend them. Uh, that was supposed to be an outdoor service um, at Rivercrest to celebrate the 75 years uh, of Rivercrest. And because of a snowstorm, uh, they had to adapt quickly and we were moved to Sonova Center. Um, and I want to commend them. That was a beautiful service. Um, three members of council here in our CAO were able to attend. 
um, and we had uh, former deputy mayor of the city of Winnipeg, George Frazier in attendance, as well as our MLA and our MP, uh, and it was the beautiful service. Mr. Gao, um, the last remaining World War II veteran in West St. Paul, in Rivercrest, was able to attend. Um, and I just wanted to commend staff uh, and Mrs. Bragg for the amazing job they did on that service. Those are my only comments regarding our CAO report. Uh, we now have our council reports. We've submitted reports from council. I'll go around the table and see if there are any questions, comments regarding those. Councillor Prague, any questions regarding the council reports? No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions regarding the council reports? Yes, I'm just, I'm just gonna read uh, from our code of conduct, section 7.6F, demonstrates respect for the decision-making, council members must demonstrate respect for the decision-making processes of the municipality accepting that a decision of council is the decision of council as a whole and making every effort to accurately communicate that decision. Paragraph one of your report at the bottom. Special thank you to those members of council, Councilor Pereg and Buschetti who supported funding for this project in a three to two vote of council. We repeatedly, repeatedly make these comments on Facebook, Mayor Christian, now in your report, um, you're not respecting our code of conduct. And our code of conduct says that you are supposed to respect the vote as a whole and not split us up like that. If you want to put three to two, that's fine, but you don't put names to it. That is, um, that is inappropriate. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clyburn. Councillor Link, any comments, questions? Well, I have to say, Madam Mayor, that I'm amazed uh, that you were able to attend 29 meetings together with the CAO. Just amazed. You're very busy. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Busetti, any comments, questions regarding the reports? Yeah, I'm going to speak to Councillor Kleiber's report. You know, uh, as it's been publicized, you're all about being fair and showing the process, as you're stating in your your report. But it's not coming out that way according to the investigations that have been publicly put out there to the residents. So it's just you're writing one thing, doing another. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bersetti. Only a couple of comments from my perspective, it'll be under five minutes um, regarding the number of meetings I've attended. It's actually 41 counselor link. Um, I attended, I believe 41 meetings just this month. Um, it is hard to believe. Um, I know we see counselor Kleiber's uh, meetings and others and yeah, it's, it's a lot of meetings, but we're a very busy municipality and I'm happy to represent our RM. Uh, in terms of demonstrating respect for decision making, um, I'll just remind council that item 13.5 in our procedural bylaw, any member of council prior to taking of a vote or any question put forth can require a recorded vote to be taken. And so those recorded votes are taken to highlight and indicate how members of council voted. So I know there's comments in Councillor Kleiber's uh, report to council um, that she feels upset uh, that votes are being highlighted um, and that a narrative is trying to, what is the word, hurt council members. Um, we have recorded votes and every member, member of council, they are respected for that vote of council. So it's not something to be ashamed of. Uh, the votes are the vote. Uh, and so um, obviously if you're voting against the budget and it's a recorded vote as all third readings are on bylaws, um, that's public knowledge. So that's not something to be uh, concerned about. There's a lot of misinformation in the report and, and I won't speak to all of it, but certainly I just wanna clarify for residents what our budget process is. And really the, the importance of following the budget process and the, and the process laid out by the provincial government and really as a council and individual council members being truthful and honest in our communication with residents. Um, our budget is not set up as separate components um, council members, um, Councillor Link and Councillor Kleiber have said, 
I really support the, uh, the capital uh, projects, but I don't like the operational and, and we're not allowed to vote that way. Um, that is not something council does not allow. Uh, that is under the uh, municipal act uh, in terms of financial administration. And so every council must adopt a financial plan, uh, a singular plan each fiscal year. And that plan includes operating capital, estimate of operating revenue expenditures, five-year plan. And so, you know, we, we all have one vote for the plan. We don't get to pick and choose out of that plan things that we like or don't like and get to vote that way. So just informing the residents that that, that is something that could be a possibility is not a possibility. Uh, that's through legislation and we follow legislation on that. I think it's good that Councillor Kleiber clarified in her report that she thought that the capital budget was good and supported the capital projects, but in no way supported the operational. So just to highlight for council and our residents, um, the operational expenditures, we provide over 45 service, that's road maintenance, waste, garbage, recycle, fire, emergency management, weed control, recreation, animal control, insect management, hydro. Um, and so to say that um, you're supportive of capital projects for beautification, but you don't believe our dedicated staff should be paid or that sh we shouldn't look after dangerous dogs, um, you know, you're able to clarify that position. Uh, I think it's irresponsible and, and untruthful to tell residents in your ward, I really supported you and I supported your project because that's not truthful if you come to the table and vote against it. Um, so that's not a support of it. Yes, I'm extremely supportive of your project, but I voted it down. I did not support voting for the green space. So telling residents that you're supporting those projects and then voting against them is, is misinforming them. Um, it, you know, it's your right to choose to vote against the budget. Those are recorded votes. It's public knowledge. Um, if you're able to defend that and happy with the way that you voted, then, then that's fine. You can defend that. All of us ultimately uh, have to defend our votes to the taxpayers. Um, there's been comments about not wanting a pay increase. Um, that's really concerning to me. Councillor Kleiber approved a compensation increase as part of a cost of living in the indemnity bylaw for council members. Um, so that our indemnity bylaw increases with the cost of living. And that was approved by all members of council. And yet we shouldn't be approving a tax increase um, to cover the costs of increasing costs of gasoline to pay for grading, to pay for staff, um, you know, to make sure that the fire department are well paid and equitable to other fire departments. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's, it's concerning and it's certainly everyone's choice, but to have reasonable increases to pay for cost of living and include those, um, you know, again, it's everyone's individual choice, but just to be clear to say, I supported the capital, but I didn't support operating. It's really one vote and that one vote is for the entire budget. And so um, it's truthful and honest and, and certainly you're able to defend that. Those aren't disparaging comments that you don't like the budget and don't believe staff should be paid. Uh, in terms of the code of conducts, uh, there was comments here that um, there's attempt to uh, damage my reputation. Um, we followed a code of conduct process outlined by the provincial government and Councillor Kleiber was found in contravention of that for harassment. Uh, that's straight out of the resolutions, uh, section seven. That is quite serious with very serious sanctions recommended. That is straight out of our resolutions and public knowledge. Um, so. You know, it, it is concerning and I don't blame you for being upset about the damage to your reputation as a result of your conduct. And, and my only hope is we can go forward in a better way. Uh, but that is public knowledge in the documents, in our minutes, um, and, and it is concerning. So discussing that and the funding and, and the amount of revenue that, that we've had to direct to these things um, is damaging to reputation and embarrassing. So I, I don't blame you for being concerned about that at all. Um, these are not simply issues of uh, speaking on behalf of the residents or standing up for truth. Um, harassment is not standing up for truth and speaking. Um, you know, we've again had a third party come in and investigate that. So we rely on the province and the procedures they put in place uh, as per the code of conduct that we discussed tonight. And so if there's been contravention of that code of conduct, that's been third party investigators as part of that. We've each had our five minutes to speak on that. We have animal control. Are there any questions regarding the animal control report? 
Seeing none then, I have a mover and a seconder on the resolution. I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. 14, 14.1 14 miscellaneous me. correspondence. Oh. Where was Councillor Cliver's vote? I didn't see which way it went. Councillor Cliver for clarification. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, Councillor Busetti asked for a point of order of how you voted. Oh, I voted in favor. Thank you, Councillor Busetti. Didn't see your hand. That's all I was at. Just didn't want to. Oh, it went up a little. I, I kind of did the same thing I did before a little late on the draw there. But thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we are on miscellaneous correspondence. Be it resolved that the Council of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul accept the miscellaneous correspondence for the month of October as information. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pereg, seconded Councillor Busetti. Any discussion regarding miscellaneous correspondence? Go ahead, Councillor Link. I have a question. Um, one of the items that was Invoices from municipal relations. I'm sorry, maybe I knew this at one time. What does um, MOG stand for? M O G, municipal. Ms. Shaw, can I refer that to you? It, it is $107,223.54. So I I yes, Madam, Madam Mayor, I can address that. That's our municipal operating grant. Uh, that's the biggie, isn't it? Uh, that, that gives us um, a great amount of money each year. However, that's one of the things that's been frozen for 2016, is it? Shaw? I apologize, that might be a question better directed to our director of finance or the CAO. Uh, uh, it's not necessary tonight. I, I, I asked what the MOG stand for and I got, I got the answer and I appreciate that answer. Thank you. Um, I did have one more question. I'm looking for it. Oh. FCM is offering an asset management grant um, and call for applications for offering grants to partners. And this is to help municipalities that volunteer um, to get assistance in improving their asset management. Grants provide 90% of total eligible project costs. So I was just wondering if there's an intention uh, to put in um, for a grant um, to improve our asset management program. We're yeah, always trying to get better. Pardon me? Sorry, I didn't hear the answer. We apply for all grants that are all grants that come across our table will apply for so asset management we applied for. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions regarding the miscellaneous correspondence? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Busetti. Oh, thank you. Councillor Prague. Thank you. And for me as well. I have a mover and a seconder on that. I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Um, we received a letter this month, item 14.2 from Statistics Canada. So we've included that there for residents um, to see as well. Uh, Mr. CEO, I don't know if that's something that you want to comment or not. I was proud to receive that. Uh, we do encourage our residents to fill out the census information so that uh, we get uh, adequate funding from the federal government. Mr. CEO, anything else that you're wanting to add? Further, go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. Just wanted to know uh, through the chair to the CEO in your experience, how long does it take before we get results from a census? 
They published February 2022 for the first results. To the chair, to the CEO, um, when do we get the full results of the census? But you're saying there's part, I'm not, I'm not familiar with this, so that's why I'm asking the question. In 20, February 2022, we'll get first results that will tell about the populations and then approximately every two months, they'll roll out additional information on demographics, uh, number of people in households and that. If you go to st uh, Statistics Canada, uh, they have their schedule set out there. Okay, thank you very much. Any other comments regarding the Statistics Canada level? Letter seeing none, I'll move on. 15.1, miscellaneous meeting dates. I'll read the resolution and then if there's any discussion, be it resolved that the Council of the Rumors Pally of West St. Paul authorize attendance at the following meetings as listed. Can I get a mover, please? Move by Councillor Pregg, seconded Councillor Bussetti. Any comments, questions regarding the miscellaneous meeting dates? Councillor Bussetti, go ahead. Uh, October 15th, I was also at that one. It just doesn't say my name at that. Okay, for Ms. Shaw to add. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Any questions, comments? Councillor Kleiber. Um, question on, before I forget, recorded vote. October the 6th, communications meeting re newsletter changes. Is that the newsletter that was like four or five pages long, the double, the double issue? Mayor Christian? I'm That's making true. notes of your questions. Keep going, Councillor Kleiber. Are there any other questions? <laughs> so I'm not getting an answer. Okay. October the 6th, uh, CAO evaluation template meeting with HR. Uh, so when we were, uh, I, I would just like to know, you voted against the continued work on that, but you've met with HR for the template. So I find that very confusing. Uh, October 7, Winnipeg Temple Tour. What is that? Who are the VIPs? Um, oh, I'm supposed to keep going because you don't want to answer them right away. Okay. Um, October 18th, preparation meeting with WMR, meeting with CAO. Okay. I'd like to know about that because apparently we... Um, we are suspend or we suspended our participation uh, with the M WMR. So I'd like an update on that if you've had a meeting with them as to what that involved. And then on October 20th, October 22nd and October 27th, uh, you had meetings for reviewing the agenda. And so on October 20th, you met with the CAO, and then on October 22nd and October 27th, you also met with the MLO. So I'm just wondering uh, why the MLO was left out of the October 20th meeting. And on October 22nd, you state upcoming agendas and email blasts. So I was just wondering, did the three of you put those things together, like the agendas and all the email blasts? Uh, and then the MLO sends them out, or do y'all input into that, or how does that work? And um, those are my questions for now. Thank you. Uh, I can answer some of these questions, uh, all of the questions. October 6th communication newsletter is exactly that. It's the newsletter. Uh, everyone received that in their mailboxes. October 7th Temple Tour, I explained that in my report to Council. Uh, item 13 on the agenda, I believe I report that and include that in there uh, as a Temple Tour. And VIPs, Mayors, Deputy Mayors, Council Members uh, were invited and so I was part of that VIP to welcome uh, a new church. Uh, uh, the WMR meeting in Headingley were WMR members but not uh, a WMR board meeting. So these are member municipalities within the metro region, Councillor Link uh, and Councillor Pregg and the CAO and I attended, uh, we were invited. 
Um, we have a resolution that we are not attending WMR board meetings, and I have not attended WMR board meetings. This is not a board meeting. This is a uh, meeting of municipalities who are in the metro region. October 20th, 22nd, and uh, 27th agenda review meetings. As per our procedural bylaw, the mayor has a role in the agendas, and so that is reflected in the meetings that you see, as well as the October 26th agenda email blast. Who puts those together? Uh, that would be uh, Julia and uh, Ms. Brown, as well as our communication consultant, um, right? Those typically, Ms. Shaw's involved in that. Uh, from time to time, there's comments from me regarding uh, feedback that all council members are getting so that uh, our public can receive information uh, regarding snow removal or things that we're all getting complaints on um, to make sure that there's information shared with the public. Um, so thank you for your questions. Um, I, I think what you're asking and making sure is, am I in compliance with our indemnity bylaw? And I am. Uh, I don't imagine that any of your questions not. regarding this are personal attacks about the meetings that I'm attending or what I'm doing. Uh, our indemnity bylaw was approved by all members of council. And just to remind, uh, remind you, Councillor Cliver and all members of council, uh, we are compensated for attending to municipal business, expenses incurred while attending to municipal business. So uh, for any meetings attended outside our regular monthly meetings. So uh, if you have any concerns about compliance with our indemnity bylaw, you have a copy of our indemnity bylaw. Everyone does. And all of my meetings are in full compliance with our bylaw. I do believe in following our bylaws. Um, and so that bylaw that we have uh, is also uh, reflected in section 1241 of our municipal act regarding municipal compensation to elected officials. And there's further information there. So I do appreciate uh, your questions. Thank you for asking them. You've had your five minutes, Councillor Kleiber. Is there anyone that I've missed in terms of questions regarding miscellaneous uh, meetings? Just gone around the table, no further questions. I had a mover and a seconder. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's Remember, this is a recorded vote. I'm sorry, we already made the vote, Councillor. No, I asked it originally when I first started talking. So roll back the tape. It says I, I asked for recorded vote. Oh, and Councillor Link, I didn't see her vote. Yep, I didn't before we even began discussing, that's correct. Yep. Thank you for the point of order. Noted, and that will be a recorded vote. Four members of council support, Councillor Kleiber against. Uh, we have item 15.2, holiday closures, municipal office public works. This was addressed at a committee of the whole meeting. I'll read the resolution. Be resolved that council, the room municipality of West St. Paul approve the schedule of closures of the municipal office and public works department for the 2021-2022 holiday season as follows, and that's listed. And further be it resolved that the 2021 to 2022 holiday hours at the Sonova Center subject to provincial health orders in place uh, at the time be as follows and those are listed. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bassetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion on that? This was discussed at our committee of the whole meeting. Seeing and hearing no further comments, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Uh, we've got 15.4 uh, to grant leave of absence to um, Councillor Pereg. Whereas Pardon Section 941 of the Municipal Act states that. Madam Mayor. Mayor. Oh, go ahead, Councillor. Go ahead, Ms. Shaw. Thank you. Sorry, 15.3 is next. Thank you. Be it resolved that Council of the Municipality of West St. Paul approve the schedule for the 2022 Council meetings. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. This was also discussed at our committee of the whole meeting. Any further discussion on the schedule for council meetings? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. All right. Now I'm on 15.4. Whereas section 94.1 of the Municipal Act states that a member of council is disqualified from council if he or she is absent for the full duration of three consecutive regular council meetings, unless the absences are with, unless the absences are with the leave of the council granted by a resolution passed at any of the three meetings, a prior meeting or the next meeting following the third absence. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Rumors Polity of West St. Paul grant Councillor Stan Prague permission to be absent for Committee of the Whole meeting scheduled for January 11, 2022, the regular planning meeting of Council scheduled for January 13, 2022, the regular meeting of Council scheduled for January 27, 2022, the Committee of the Whole meeting scheduled for February 8, 2022, and the regular meeting of Council scheduled for February 10, 2022. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti. Seconded, Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Councillor Prague, if you're wanting to talk about why you're requesting the leave or not, that's entirely up to you. Yeah, I have no problem. I'm leaving. I have to go back in the emergency in the Caribbean. I have business to take care of there. And it will take me this much time to get my business done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Uh, any, go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Prag, do you not have any internet down there that because we're virtual, you can really just log on and um, and take part in the meeting. Is there no internet down there for you? The, the internet is kind of weak, just like what we have here in the countryside, but I will make an effort. As I Thank told you. the mayor, I will make an effort to get on. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns from council? Hearing and seeing none, I'll ask for a recorded vote and I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. 15.5 Chip Balderstone Award. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul accept Ray and Joan Anderson as the 2021 award co-recipients for the J.C. Chick Balderstone Memorial Award as recommended by the West St. Paul Recreation Committee. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preg, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any discussion regarding that? So that recommendation comes to us from the Recreation Committee. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead, then Councillor Link. Sorry. So this recommendation came from the Recreation Committee. Um, I imagine that would be uh, the person heading up the, um, the Recreation Committee is Councilor Buschetti, and maybe he can speak to this. Uh, it says here in the administration report, the J.C. Balderson Award is presented to recognize on an annual basis an individual who's provided outstanding community services to the RM of West St. Paul. When I read the letter, all the volunteer work is in Selkirk. So I don't know how long these people have lived in West St. Paul, but all of their volunteer that you want us to recognize is for Selkirk. So I'm wondering why Selkirk isn't recognizing their volunteering rather than us. This is supposed to be reserved for our, our community and contribution to our community. So uh, I'm a little um, perplexed by this. Councillor Brissetti, I will refer Councillor Kleiber's questions to you as chair of the Recreation Committee. With the ones that were nominated, this is what the committee did a vote internally, and this is the one that was chosen. Councillor Kleiber, you've had your five minutes. I'm going to continue going around to make sure that everybody has that opportunity. I don't know why we're not following our, our own. Pardon me? I don't know why we're not following our own um, stipulation. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Link, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Reading this over, I had exactly the same questions as Councillor Kleiber. So I'm wondering if somebody might enlighten me as to what, perhaps this, this, this came up in discussion at REC, I have no idea, but uh, what are the outstanding community services to the RM of West St. Paul? I am sure that these nominees, nominees are wonderful giving people living in West St. Paul. But I would particularly like to know what the outstanding community services to the R 
am, are, or were. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Go ahead, Councillor Bussetti. Well, this is a award that's given out every year. And it seems we're getting less and less nominations. And it's not a surprise to council that this comes up every year. And anybody is free to put out the nominations. So feel free next year to put out a nomination because we've had two. We choose from those two. And that's the ones that were nominated. That's the one that was accepted. That's all I can answer to you. We can only choose from what we receive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bussetti. Councillor Prague, any questions, comments regarding the Alder Chief Alderstone Award? Don't we have to respect the decision of the recreation committee? Yeah, that's why they're put there. The committee all, I know Councillor Bussetti overlooks that. Am I correct? Yes, they make the decision and put their recommendation to us. So if, if council members don't like their recommendation, they can vote against it. But in terms of the process, um, that process for selection is in the hands of the Recreation Committee, and this is what they brought to Council. So we, we aren't involved in the decision-making process. This is their recommendation, and, and we respect them handling the process, and we're either okay with this recommendation or not. Madam Chair, to the, the Chair, Councillor Bassetti, did you have any say in this, in the selection? No, this year was very, well, I had to say, we, we kind of talked internally and then had a vote on it, but this year was very hard to get nominations for volunteers because of COVID and the lack of functions going on where you could volunteer. So these are residents from West St. Paul that were nominated and we felt that, you know, to respect the award, the Chick Balderstone Award, we have to put a name to the to it every year. It's just what happened. Thank you. I totally agree with your comments, Councillor Bassetti. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bassetti. Uh, my my comments are that um, you know these volunteers are clearly dedicated volunteers, uh, and in terms of uh, volunteering and how that benefits uh, West Saint Paul. Their volunteer work is with regional associations or things that benefit all of us. So um, our residents are able to make use of uh, Selkirk Library and receive uh, some of their costs for a library card back from West St. Paul. So Selkirk Library, um, uh, they've got uh, involved in founding uh, Gwen Fox Gallery, a gallery that our residents use. Um, they're involved in a lot of uh, volunteering through Cancer Care Manitoba, sadly, uh, a service that our West St. Paul residents have to use. Um, and so, you know, sometimes it's not just specific of what you've done right within the boundaries of West St. Paul to benefit our West St. Paul residents. Um, sometimes it's what you've done in the region that help our West St. Paul residents. So I'm fully supportive of this. Um, it, you know, this is entirely up to the Recreation Committee in terms of looking at the um, what's submitted to them uh, and bringing forth to council a recommendation. So I'm fully supportive of this. I think these people have done great work and I'm proud that they've chose to live in West St. Paul. I have a mover and a seconder. We've all Can had I get a recorded vote, please. Request for a recorded vote from Councillor Brissetti. And I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And Councillor Kleiber, are you voting on this matter? I abstain. All right, we have 15, uh, we're at 9.47. So actually I'm gonna take this opportunity to uh, request to extend the meeting till 10.30. Can I have a mover to extend our meeting to 10.30? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion, hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried, thank you. All right, we are at 15.6 West St. Paul Recreation Committee Youth Volunteer. Be it resolved that the Council of the Ruminous Municipality of West St. Paul accept Kara Yackel as the recipient for the 2021 West St. Paul Recreation Committee Youth Volunteer Award as recommended by the Recreation Committee. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, second Councillor Craig. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will ask for a recorded vote and I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? 
and that is carried. 15.7, Abundant Life Lutheran Church, Christmas hamper, something that we've done for many years now. Be it resolved that Council of the Municipality of West St. Paul contributes $150 for the Abundant Life Lutheran Church for the 2021 Community Christmas hamper program. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded by Councillor Preg. Uh, Ms. Shaw, I don't know if there's anything that you're wanting to add to this. This is a hamper that we've been, uh, your staff has been working to collect every year for a number of years uh, for the region. I'll turn it over to you if there's anything you're wanting to add. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, following this resolution, uh, we are going to uh, communicate and uh, promote this hamper program, uh, which supports West St. Paul residents. Uh, this uh, year, like last year, uh, is asking just for cash or gift card donations rather than uh, food and gifts, but we're going to get uh, information out to residents so they can help support this great cause. Thanks. Thank you for the additional information for Council. Any other questions regarding the Abundant Life Community Christmas Hamper? Go ahead, Councillor Kleiber, then to Councillor Lane. Uh, Ms. Shaw, if, if uh, people want to um, donate to this, like even council, what is the procedure then? Are we to come into the uh, administration building and do we get a receipt or, or how's that going to work for people? Is it just so, so that people know, is there a tax receipt, et cetera? Thanks. We're going, to, we're going to get that information out to residents, but um, what happens is uh, that checks would be made payable to the Abundant Life Lutheran Church Christmas Hampers. Uh, tax receipts will be provided by the church. Uh, we'll also include an email and phone number if there's any questions that people have. Um, and, and like I said, it's, it's cash donations. Their goal for this season is to provide gift card hampers um, to the areas uh, so that um, that's how they, they plan to do the hampers this year. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Councillor Link, go ahead. I, I can't remember the RM contribution uh, to Abundant Life last year. What was it? And I'll have a follow up question. Michelle, do you remember if it was $150 last year as well? Uh, my apologies, Madam Mayor. Yes, I've confirmed it was $150 last year as well. Uh, considering that groceries have gone up so much during COVID-19, I'm wondering if council would entertain an increase in the contribution to $250. Council doesn't have to do an increase of $250. I'll put in the extra $100. Well, I plan to put in an individual donation myself, but a, uh, uh, um, a contribution from the RM um, is, is different than a personal contribution, I think. Anyway, any of the other, anybody second that? Uh... Thank you, Councillor Link. Uh, the movers and the seconder would have to be okay with making that change to the mover and the seconder. Are you okay with upping that to 250? Yes, from Councillor Busetti. Councillor Prague? Yes, yes, yes. And add my extra hundred dollars to that. Uh, can we do that? A, a personal to yeah, account? Yeah, Christmas. Yeah. No, I understand that it's Christmas. I mean, I'm going to do mine separately too, but um, on this resolution, it would just be from the RM, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. and I don't want a tax receipt. It's from my heart. <laughs> All right, so we are at $350, $250 from the RM. The CAO is kicking in $100 of his own, not having a tax receipt as part of the municipal contribution. The mover and the second are okay with that. Santa over there today, Mr. CAO. Thank you. 
Madam Ms. Shaw, go ahead. For clarification, the resolution will read 350 or 250? 250. 250. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we've All right. had discussion. Councillor Prague, was there anything else you're wanting to add? No, thank you. No, thank you. We're in the Christmas spirit. Good suggestion, Councillor Link. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Very good. All right, I will read the resolution for us to go in camera. We have a few in camera items. We'll see what we can get through. Be it resolved that in accordance with section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council now do, do now move in camera to discuss matters that are in preliminary stages and respecting which discussion in public could prejudice the municipality's ability to carry out its activities or negotiations and legal matters. And be it therefore resolved that in accordance with section 83.1d of the Municipal Act, any issues that are discussed are kept confidential until discussed at a regular meeting of council. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bassetti, second Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. We are going in camera.
We are out of camera now. We discussed a couple of items in camera. Uh, first 19.3.1 Main Street tail, Trail Connection. I will read the resolution for that item. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul declare the destruction of the Main Street Trail from 3615 Main Street to the Trails of West St. Paul subdivision by the province without consultation with the municipality as an emergency that gives rise to immediate action being taken for the best interests and public safety of its residents. And further be it resolved that the Council of the Room Municipality of West St. Paul accept the quotation for the reconstruction of the Main Street Trail submitted by Top IT in the amount of $42,750 plus GST. And further be it resolved that the cost be borne by the, from the capital budget. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Brusetti, seconded Councillor Craig. I will request a recorded vote. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried, thank you. Uh, as part of our rise and report 19.32, council also discussed legal items in response to a complaint. Item 19.3.3, we did not get a chance to discuss. Um, Ms. Shaw, do I need to table, have a resolution to table that for a upcoming meeting? Do I need a resolution from council? Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. No resolution is required, uh, just direction to table to a future meeting. Thank you. And so directed. I will read the resolution to adjourn the meeting. Be it resolved that this meeting of council be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Preg, seconded Councillor Brusetti. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Late night. Enjoy what's left of it. <laughs>